if you are watching this Rooster Teeth podcast on YouTube, first of all, thank you very much. But don't forget that you can see us record the podcast live every Monday as a member of our first program on roosterteeth.com. Look for it wherever alphabets are sold. Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast, a very special Gusless Rooster Teeth Podcast. My name is Bernie Burns. I'm Chris Damaris. Gavin. And I'm Gus. And I want to say I'm, pr- I'm pr- proud of you guys. Like, we did, we went in a reverse order. and We're adaptable people. Didn't miss a beat. You have to be to work here. you got to yep. be like, what? Left to right? Chris right to left? The, Chris I was in the second position, though. Well, it's like driving, it's like, because you're reverse hosting, so it's like driving on the other side of the road. You How have dare to... you? What do you mean reverse hosting? <laughs> you're hosting from that side. I'm always on this side. But Gus starts it. Well, why don't you and host then? Go around. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I'm Gus. Rooster Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. So are you saying that I'm not a host of this program, that Gus is the host? And well, that when, when he's gone, it's reverse host because I'm here? Well, uh, as has been mentioned before, do you get the sponsor stuff? Listen, listen, Miss. We'll talk about it in a minute. But you're off brand. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> get back on. I always brand. find it weird how Michael. I like to on, neg you. Off topic, Michael will say, "I'm your host, Michael," and he, here's all the other people. But it's like everyone's doing the same amount of work on the podcast. <laughs> it's all the same. I'm gonna put my gum down here. You had gum in. You unprofessional bastard. I'm a little unprofessional. Well, the real host is. So this here. is why you don't yeah. normally host. <laughs> the forwards host is I have not gum, here. But I haven't chewed it since I've. Have you stopped bleeding? I, what did you do? Just <laughs> no. Yeah, so you, let's talk about Chris. you can't chew gum? Do you just like tuck it in like a uh-huh. pocket? Yeah. That's not good for you though, right? Like that'll eat a hole in your face. Well, it's not that. in there that long. Yeah. I'm not like storing it for like a it's, day. I mean, it's not tobacco. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Like if you left a steak out on a counter for 12 hours and then you walked up and ate it, that's not a great idea, right? Yeah. yeah. But don't they hang meat for days? Yes. Yeah, but it, and also it's like you, if you get something stuck in your teeth and you don't know it, and then you find it later in the day, that's not that that's, doesn't go bad. We have a special guest tonight <laughs> tonight who will be uh, I think Sally LePage is going to be coming by and joining us later, so we can ask her that. Why doesn't food spoil in your mouth? <laughs> I think the answer is it does. <laughs> it's just already in your mouth, so you eat it. So if you left it in there for like a week and a half, you you'd have a dry aged little bite of steak. Is that what mm. you got? Well, there's a lot of bacteria in your gob, right? Also, don't the dry aged mine? Stuff, don't how dare they, you? No. Doesn't it all get old and then they just cut off the moldy bits on the outside? Yes, that is correct. It's like cheese. That is correct. Just That's the problem with uh, hamburger gets recalled a lot because they basically take the surface of it and they grind it up with the rest of it, so they can't really, you know. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they just whispered. They Go just whispered at me. <laughs> We want to thank our sponsors for tonight's <laughs> podcast. This is what happens when Gus isn't here. Our sponsors are Harry's, Jack Thr- Jack's Thread, excuse me, and Squarespace. So thank you all for sponsoring the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I don't think I've ever been on a podcast that was sponsored by Jack Threads, so that's a new sponsor. Did you call it Jack's Threads? I did. So <laughs> I was that's why I was making an excuse that I've never seen them before. So welcome Jack Threads. Nailed it. Thanks, dude. I do my best. What are you drinking? Is that booze? No, this is water from our lovely dinner that we had. That doesn't look like water. It's So here's what I do. He likes to spike it. I get mostly water and then a little shot of lemonade. Just the tiniest little shot of lemonade. Not just lemon juice, but lemonade. Go ahead. No. How many soda fountains do you go to that have lemon juice? (laughs) He doesn't know you got it from a fountain. You could have just squirted lemonade. It's a plastic cup from Verts. It's really common for them to have, like, you know, oh, lemon water. Lemon. That was, by the way, that was one of my favorite things from the <laughs> campaign was when there was some viral photo of Donald Trump's son and he was at a place, like an in and out I think, and he was taking a photo with somebody and someone pointed out that he had the water cup that they give you, the clear cup, but he had Coke in it. <laughs> and everyone was furious about it. It's like something that everybody can identify with. Like, you fucking <laughs> He took eat. the free cup and filled it with You rich drinks. brick, and you're getting Coke in the water cup. How dare you? So, I even, this is a full-size, full-price fountain drink that I only put this much of the fountain oh, okay. drink in. Like, well, a that's... little lemonade in at the top. Then that's completely understandable. Well, I'm, I'm actually wasting money to be. I, yeah, deserve, I agree. You I deserve agree. it, though. You deserve it for having such a douchey combination of liquids there. What? Water How with a little bit of lemon in it? Uh, water that I get a little squirt of lemonade from the fat. Just, just drink water. What's it going to do Fucker, to you? Fucker, at dinner you drank apple juice. What are you, eight? <laughs> What's wrong with apple juice, dude? Who drinks juice after their 
after they leave school. Juice is great. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you, uh, Chris, do you drink juice on a regular basis? Not apple juice. Orange juice. juice. <laughs> Orange juice is acceptable. For breakfast. Yeah. Oh, actually, I was on a plane recently and I ordered apple juice. The guy next to me laughed. <laughs> 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 do you think he was laughing at my apple juice? Yeah, it's probably. like a little kid thing. Did you, did you order a whiskey to go with it? No. Then, yeah, he was laughing at your apple juice. Damn it. Did What's you have it in a sippy cup? <laughs> It's just apple juice. Well, like, if I ordered a glass of grape juice, that's weird, right? That's a little kid drink. When was the last time you had grape juice? I've never had grape juice. I didn't even know they sold that. You've never had grape juice? <laughs> really? Is it real from grapes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, like, milk you, a bunch of grapes? Name like, the juices in the UK. It's like, name them. It's like wine without the fun bits. Oh, you got orange juice, you got apple juice, and then you maybe got some, like, cranberry, and maybe some, like, apple and pear. And then yeah, okay. your mixtures of different... A fruit punch. And then you got cloudy apple juice, which is way better than just... They sell it differently? Is yeah. that what we call cider? Uh, they're slightly different processes, I think. When does a juice become a cider? What happens? Booze. When is it, it just up? where they make it? Is that what it is? No, because uh, you get Spices. apple cider in the States that's not <laughs> Chris, alcoholic. Chris really like, you can get answer. hard cider, but soft cider like for the holidays and stuff is... You guys, you get way cloudy. too complex here. Soft ciders and hard ciders. What's a cider? What is it? What is a cider? Made out of apples. Yeah, but so is apple Unless juice. it's made out of pears. It's spices. Spices. I'm going to go with Chris's answer. Yeah, spices. yeah, it's spices and it's cider. All right, I'm going to go to the internet and find out when does a cider I, become I wanna, a cider. I'm calling bullshit What do you mean you didn't know what grape had a juice? Well, I just never bought <laughs> grape juice. Like, is it flavored? You it's know, just, you get, it's you've purple. literally it's never just had wine grape that's juice? Not, it's just wine that's not, it's wine that's not alkalized. <laughs> Uh, fermented is what I was looking for. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Oh, yeah. It, is, it's, it must be the cloudy version. Cider is a term used in the United States and parts of Canada for the unfiltered, unsweetened, non-alcoholic beverage made from apples. So it's just unfiltered, basically, and unsweetened. So it's like the good kind of sake. It's cloudy. Yeah. Cloudy so why juice. doesn't grape juice... Why haven't I heard of that? I is don't know. Just... <laughs> why haven't you heard of that? So, how old are you in the UK when you can have wine at dinner? Because in uh, Paris, it's like they give it to you in a baby. Probably bottle. like fourteen or something. Yeah, fourteen. Right? If you're with a parent, you like, get it in the sippy cup. <laughs> yeah, like we had, we had at we, you, you both came to the New Year's party. Did you come, Chris? Yeah, I did. Okay, that was gonna be really embarrassing for a second. <laughs> See, that's more <laughs> offensive though because you didn't remember that he was there. He made no impression on you. At the I party. was just making sure. I suddenly had this moment of oh shit! Did I mention the New Year's Eve party in front of Chris? <laughs> Patrick was invited and didn't come. Oh. He, he just ditched. Wow. He was like, nah, I'm doing my own thing. Plans. He had plans, he said. Plans. Who has well, plans I was, on New Year's? I was there. Such a fake story. <laughs> but it's, uh, Please, there are alternative facts now. We, 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 it was an alternative fact that Patrick just laid down. We had all the champagne that we drank. The champagne drinkers destroyed the liquor drinkers. We had probably half of a bottle of whiskey gone by the end of the night, but we had about... 24 empty champagne bottles. I was it thinking was about nuts. that. I was thinking about that recently. Well, Go not ahead. recently. More. Uh, <laughs> I think it was the location of the champagne. Right by the kitchen. People are like, where's... Oh, champagne. The... Uh, I, I don't even... The liquor was like hidden around the corner. <laughs> hidden around the corner. It was on the bar, wasn't it? It was in the bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, hidden around the cor corner <laughs> at the bar. It's just too far. <laughs> so how many bottles well, of champagne bar? did you buy? Uh, we, I think we bought 30 altogether. How much did that party cost Sh you? Uh, champagne? Uh, it, it cost us not in what people drank, but in stuff that we miscalculated. Like, by, at the end of the party, I had about 30 limes. And I <laughs> always overestimate the amount of beer that my friends will drink. And I had that cooler that's the, I have a really badass cooler that's a wine barrel that's cut in half. So it's really cool. And it looks great when you fill it up with beer. Probably two beers were taken out of it the entire night. It was, so it, I overbought beer by about six. I think beers. beer's out. I think people don't want beer anymore. No, 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 I like beer, but it was like again, hidden. It was hidden. It was out of the way. <laughs> gotcha, it was. Chris. You need yeah. a, you need to hire a bloke just walking around with a tray <laughs> of beer and and whiskey. Apparently, there were shots in the uh, hall closet. So <laughs> <laughs> Chris didn't get find those either. It was a big Easter egg hunt to find booze, <laughs> wine coolers in the hot tub at the house. But I was gonna say at the party where we drank all of the champagne. Ashley, you were one of the big culprits for that. You and Barbara were just uh, you. You guys were a terror. Yeah. Did you get ratted? So yeah. <laughs> it was New Year's. What? Uh, that's the tradition. You kind of have to. Also, though, because I made a champagne bar, I decided to get classy as fuck. And so I got little bowls of, like, blueberries and raspberries and pomegranate seeds. So you could just drop a couple in. 
And that it, way they go up and down in your drink. Oh, really? Yeah, for as long cool. as you have for the two minutes that nice. you're drinking it. Yeah, but then it gets all boozy and you get to chew on it. I really enjoyed the, the mug. The special mug that you've I've got. <laughs> I bought a special mug for Gavin. He likes copper mugs whenever we go oh. out to bars. Yeah. So now I have in my house a copper mug. But that's it's because, only I drink, Gavin's. because I drink a Moscow mule. That's right. Or a Moscow mule, as you would say. Or you Moscow. attempted to, at least. Moscow. My understanding is that particular Moscow mule was not very... Well... It was more mule than Moscow? I don't know how to make one. So I was just drinking whiskey out of it all night. And <laughs> if Jordan, only there was a place where you go to look up recipes. For Jordan things. Swears was like, I'll make you a Moscow mule. And it was awful. <laughs> it was like the worst <laughs> thing. I think it was like a bunch of lime and some crap from the bar. And then I think half of Lindsay's old drink he poured in there too, which I'm not sure what it was. But and apparently Martinelli's, that was one of the ingredients. Probably. Well, yeah. Mo Moscow Mule is just lime, vodka, and uh, ginger beer, right? That sounds right. Yeah. Were any of Why those things in it? Why did you say whiskey, it? though? Because I was just drinking oh, whiskey. Okay. Because right. I couldn't find those ingredients. <laughs> hidden, so, hidden. at the party with all the champagne that we drank, we also additionally had for the boys who stayed up that night until I think 1.30 in the morning. That's probably criminal for an 11 year old like Teddy. But they had uh, sparkling grape juice. Have you not seen that before? No. <laughs> really? Wow, because there was a couple of kids, uh, what, a couple of people grapes? brought their kids to the party and they ran around upstairs and uh, we had sparkling grape juice for them to drink at New Year's like everybody else. What grape type is it? Well, there's all kinds. Of, I can't believe we're having a whole section of the so podcast there's, there's dedicated to grape grapes, juice. And then there's red grapes. There's but Concord. What's the, what's the no? Juice? What's the juice made of? Grapes. Gavin, it's just grape juice. What's apple juice made or of? Was it red or, or yeah, green grapes? There is two different kinds of. Oh, here we go. There's two different kinds of grape juice. There's the purple grape juice and there's the white grape juice, which comes from quote unquote white grapes, which are green grapes. Wait, so there's that's a blueberry grape there. What's that? It's blueberries and grapes. Blueberries oh. and grapes. <laughs> Chris thought he learned about a whole new fruit. A blueberry grape. <laughs> That's my bad. Uh, grape Look, juice is usually, it's usually grape juice is made from purple grapes. Literally, I need someone from the UK to tell me on Twitter, using hashtag RT Podcast, that you... <laughs> Somebody's obsessed with the fact that they think my hands look small. <laughs> <laughs> my hands look normal size, You look don't very they? presidential. You've been trumped? I don't know. They're, I think they're. I think they're trying to trump me. I don't know what's happening. Do we need but to rescue? I need someone his... on Twitter to tell me from the UK that you know what the fuck grape juice is. That you've heard of this before. Do we need to rescue his wife <laughs> from that? That was a. It's scary. Does it? It worries me that the thing that bothers me most about Trump, and this honestly does bother me, is I don't like the way that he treats his wife. And I don't know if it's just people cherry picking moments, but like him leaving her behind at the car. And there was some gif today, gif, sorry, Ashley, where he turned around and said something to her and her face just like dropped completely. She was smiling. He says something to her and then she immediately just starts frowning and looking down. And I was like, oh, that's so sad. You know, it's just like, I don't like that. I don't like seeing that yeah. stuff. It's horrible. I hope that's not, I hope it's just like odd moments and that's not how she lives her life. Well, there was something like that that actually kind of pissed me off. Um, during the inauguration, we're talking about the inauguration of now President Donald Trump. And during his inauguration, people kept posting photos, screen grabs of Michelle Obama with this look on her face. They put like her, oh, her, her shade throwing look there. Yeah, saying. she had like just kind of like that. Or like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That kind of look. But I didn't think that was fair because I get mm -hmm. that the people watching were anti Trump, but actually the Obamas were super gracious the entire mm -hmm. time. And to cherry pick these moments from her. And make her look like she's miserable or catty the entire time. She wasn't like that at all. She really was not. They were very gracious. In fact, did you guys watch the inauguration? I watched highlights. Well, no, like, you know. The 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 craziest thing about the inauguration was that to know that the Ob there there's one there, we have one on the screen shade face. But you can cherry pick any moment from face. a video feed. I think she and, looks fierce. And make it look like the person is upset or throwing shade. Yeah, she could have just like, you know, sniffled or something, or you know, sneezed or. Any other? <laughs> Apparently, in the UK, grape juice not a thing. They've only ever heard of. I'm from the UK. I've only heard of grape juice from American TV shows. So is it Andrew good, Lewis? Is it good said like that. grapes, or is it just grape? Does it taste like a? It's in very a grape? sugary. Gavin, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> Do you know what apple juice is? Does apple juice taste like apples? Yeah. It's Ish. A good apple like juice. Like the cloudy does. stuff does. Yeah. Yeah. Tastes like apples. Right. So that's it. Go for it. But that grape sounds juice. rank. 
<laughs> you should have. I can't believe you had a grape. We gotta get Gra- like, Gavin's. I like, grape juice. I like a grape because of the like the and it's like oh yeah, it's like a nice little packet of goodness. I don't want just the juice from a grape. Well, you like an apple because it's like a, the thing with a packet of goodness, and you still like the juice enough to order it on planes. It's not like a one bite thing. Do you like wine? Yeah, wine's made out of grapes, Gavin. It doesn't taste like a grape though. Grape I'm juice never, is like, awfully sugary in comparison to wine, though. No, no, it's juice versus wine. Sure, yeah. I, I'm not convinced there's real grapes in it. <laughs> I just don't see how that could be <laughs> a good drink. I can't it. believe I've known you this long and we just discovered okay, you don't press, know what grape juice is. If I got a, a whole... We have a whole shirt where you like grapes. <laughs> <laughs> I love grapes. It doesn't say people like grape juice. That's insane. <laughs> if I got a whole wedge of grapes... Thanks for saying that you love grapes because now we get to make a whole new shirt. <laughs> You've upped the ante. <laughs> if I smashed a whole bunch of grapes into juice, I don't think that would taste like grape juice. What you have. What? That's the I, that's exactly what grape juice is. It is. That's the grapeiest what? grape juice. Do we have any grape have. juice? Northern Ireland checking in. They know about grape juice. So, are you well. guys going to keep Northern Ireland for the thing? <laughs> for the Brexit? Are you guys going to keep them? You're going to lose them, aren't you? You're going to lose Scotland well, and Northern Ireland. Are you, are you going to adopt them out? I you're going to lose them, right? Are, are we? I don't know. It's like it's a possibility, dude. The whole thing seems so far in the future at this point. I don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. Now, even after Trump was elected, the inauguration seemed really far away. But I was going to say, one of the tough parts about watching the inauguration, probably the toughest part for me was... That it was real life? <laughs> I like the Obamas. I, I do. I like the Obama presidency. Gavin, you said on Twitter that you felt he, that Obama was the most influential president of your lifetime, or influential? Got, got uh, shit on for that. Really? Yeah. Well, there's people who have very specific problems with Obama, which I get, which is why I said Donald it because Trump was elected as like, our president. Those are important years. Like, the years right after you leave school, is I, w- I would say, is when you become you. So the president at that time is, is influential over you. Influential is a weird word, though, because it doesn't necessarily have a positive connotation to it. I think I enjoyed the Clinton years more, even though that was a fucking mess with everything and all the trials and him, him like brushing up against impeachment. Um, <laughs> it's not the only thing you brushed up against. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. The, uh, the, 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 I think George W. Bush was a way more influential president in my life just because everything that happened in George W. Bush's presidency, you know, with 9-11 and the war. Ducking shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, well, 2008, the the crash in 2008 happened. Uh, that happened yeah, one, that happened like, during like, the election like one, later. two like, months before right. the election. Yeah, right. which is crazy. Yeah. Like, the you know, I think of the, I think of the, like, the. Clinton years as being like the Obama years where it was just a period of incredible growth, it felt like, with just recovery and, you know, the dot-com industry came out during the Clinton years and everything. But back to the inauguration, the tough part for me was watching, and I'm going to wrap this point up, was that it was tough for me to watch that speech that, that Trump gave, knowing that the Obamas, or Barack Obama, was five feet away. And he's essentially just like, in order to make America great, he's got to sell the fact that America is a big piece of shit right now. So it was basically, it was weird to hear the President of the United States get up there and talk about how shitty America is. <laughs> like how city centers are falling apart and education's a misery. Well, his, his slogan doesn't work if you think America's... That's what I'm saying. You, yeah. gotta, you, gotta, <laughs> se- you gotta sell the, 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 that things are shitty, you know? That was well, like the picture today of him signing the anti-abortion thing with like seven dudes all around him. Like there's no woman in that <laughs> photo and he's like, no abortions. Oh, right. And people, I, I, did you see the caption somebody put on that? Of, no. Can you imagine if like seven women were sitting around writing a thing telling them that they, they couldn't have reproductive rights and they had the control over their reproductive organs? It's insanity. Yeah. My, I think- my favorite sign of all the signs in the protest the day after <laughs> was this episode of Black Mirror Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I like the old ladies who were like, I can't believe I still have to protest this shit, which is I'm starting to feel that way too. It's like, are we really, really talking about some of this stuff? Still. Did you go out, Chris, to any of the mm-hmm. uh, marches? Where'd you go? You go to Austin? Yeah. Well, that's where I, I wouldn't travel <laughs> somewhere to go. It'd be waiting for hey, Look, some, some people traveled halfway across the country to march in D.C. Washington? Okay, so. yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, no, but, um, no, I went out. So you're lying. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> A lot of people flew I know, in. I went you out could, to- You could have been in Dallas. Who knows? Where are you right. from? Uh, Texas-ish. Go Te- ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Somewhere in Texas. Texas-ish. Yeah, somewhere in Texas. yeah it, well, in, from Texas, but it's like, it's ambiguous. No, it's not ambiguous. I was born in Lubbock. He was born in ambiguous Texas. <laughs> born in Lubbock, born in Lubbock Texas. I was raised in Longview, Texas. I love so Lubbock. Texas and Texas. Yeah. Doesn't mean t- ish. Lubbock um, has amazing storms. 
<laughs> yeah, they, they do. It's like dust a super storms. flat, storms. flat part of Texas. So what, everything just rolls in. Yeah. Did and the they end up wind with like mile high cloud banks with lightning flying through me? I think it's pretty dope. The wind blew off old bits of my house the other day. Oh, would it blow off? <laughs> like the window frame, shingles what? and stuff. Yeah, the like, wind blew off my placemat. <laughs> <laughs> like I walk. Hope you can rebuild, Chris. <laughs> oh, no, it was really weird because I walked. I was like, "There's no welcome." Mat. That was no welcome for anyone. And then I had to go and like I found it on Place the mat. ground on the bottom floor. Place mat. Oh. Okay. That's what the, I was the, so the mat for your entire place. So you live uh, at what? Uh, <laughs> not on the ground floor. Third. Yeah. And it's gone. And I was like, uh, I like the idea of like Chris going out to eat dinner over his welcome <laughs> mat. <laughs> Then sure enough, he goes out in his play placemat. <laughs> but I, did I say the wrong word? Placemat's under a dinner dish. That's right. Or... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could say it's the mat for your place. But <laughs> that's what I was thinking. My place is mat. That's how you would say. That. That's how you would say. That. <laughs> the apostrophe there. <laughs> apostrophe. Yeah, the possessive makes all the difference in that one. Yeah, we what had, happens um... in your life? Just like the funniest stuff must happen. <laughs> Do you just think the funniest things when you're just out on your own in the world? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, th I probably think about the same things you think. <laughs> I mean, earlier hilarious. you asked me if if I put if I shoved a fork up my ass. <laughs> Chris, you don't want to tell us what? tell the, se what? the secret <laughs> conversations we had. What, so I thought it'd be a, end or I thought it'd be a fun game, right? There's a plastic fork over there. Can we I get thought, a? Can we get a? Is there a plastic fork? We're gonna need a fork. The one of the ones from the pizza. But you know that was a private conversation. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. Well, you don't have to explain it. No, I want to now. Okay, you brought it up. I guess I did like bring it up, like loaded. Like you asked me if I could shove a fork at my ass. So I had this right, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, it's gonna sound so <laughs> stupid because it involves grapes again." <laughs> Why does it involve like, grapes? <laughs> so I was like, "Chris, do you think? Look at this fork." I was like, "Do you think if you put the fork in this way, uh, like halfway in your asshole, like just..." Get it about there and then clench. Could you pick up a grape <laughs> with it? <laughs> with the back end of it? No, no, this no. is the ass here. That's the anus. Got it. Okay. But could you, ha did you have the, the anal dexterity to then pick up a grape that was on a table? It's a deep squat to get down. It's on a table. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. That's what I said. And yeah. Chris was like, I absolutely could do that. And I was like, a, a ripe, like a knocked over ripe grape is very tough. And it might have that sort of Why like. A grape? Oh, so you're assuming that <laughs> Why you, is it your go-to You're object? assuming that you need to stab the grape, not scoop it up. No, yeah, otherwise yeah, it'd be a spoon. You actually, gotta fork it. This is a fork. A lot of people spoon with forks. <laughs> well, that's not the, how you play the game, Ashley. No, I just <laughs> think that would be a very interesting game. Well, here it thing. wouldn't be filmable. Though. You have to we get can... far enough in your anus with that. You could do but it. But then also you have to clear the cheeks. Look, it's easier if you hold the fork because then you can like visualize you can demonstrate. it. Better. You could do it if you had a hole in your pants. Almost. That, just, just. Oh, yeah. yeah. A hole in your pants. Why well, no, you if we were going to make a video out of it. <laughs> I'm not volunteering. So the problem, <laughs> the problem with this scenario, Chris, is you don't want to get your butt out. Is that the, <laughs> that's really the problem? With no, he, he's trying to figure out ways to make this filmable. Okay, let's do this. So I got the fork in my hand right now for you audio listeners, and there's probably about three inches of handle, maybe like three and a half, four. Um, looks, so looks how like, much of that? Uh, that looks like seven. How much? No, excuse me, this is a ten inch fork. Chris, Chris was adding <laughs> another <Ashley> variable. <laughs> Chris was I adding appreciate Ashley's scale. <laughs> he was adding the additional challenge that there'd be a line on the fork, and you weren't allowed to go in deeper than the line. So you actually had to clench to hold the fork. So how much do I need? There, it might, you should tell me when to stop. I'll move okay. my fingers up, and that's enough to clench. Keep going. Keep going. About there. You need that much in there? Okay. I think I need more. Is can you clear, <laughs> can you can you clear your cheeks though from anus to edge yeah, of cheek? Uh, that's what the the rest of the spare room is for. That's S cheek clearage. This this rest of the handle. Yeah. You, wait, hold on. But you then you've only got like this much oh, of the fork coming out. Hold on. You, you think you can clench it if you fork? have one inch in? What's this? You Go think ahead. you can clench if you have like one inch in? Yeah, if you get if you get just like a you get it in there. But then mm. it's gonna wobble. Yeah, it's gonna wobble big time. Well, I mean, uh, those no, are, look, got, there's only one way to beat too. for sure. You're doing a full glute <laughs> press. That's not a <clears throat> that's not a glute press. You want your glutes nice and loose. You need I your do, butthole puckered. <laughs> 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 totally different. I think the challenge would be if you if clenching. you if you clench your glutes, then you're gonna need more length on the fork. Hey, if we write our own wedding vows, can I include <laughs> in your you need your butthole puckered? Can you include that in, in it? That'd I just great. think <laughs> at each grasp of the grape, like each. You're gonna have to clench, but you'll probably miss a few times, and the clench over a long period of time will be the hard part. The clench over oh, so it's just like just it's like an endurance thing. Yeah, well, and, maybe, unless you just don't want to clench. You're not used to making a stabbing motion with your butt. 
That's not. I'm gonna hand this back to you. This fork feels weird in my hands now. I don't want to deal with it anymore. With it. But somehow, <laughs> somehow, I think that's a video. I don't know how. But Make it, a video then. Yeah, I I don't know. During this conversation, I can't stop clenching my butthole. <laughs> Just like protectively. I might instinctively clenching like, as well. Like, you're okay, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be fine. You think be forking or spooning would be harder? Um I think forking would, because you're pressing against your own clench. Well, I don't know. <laughs> no, you that motion is scooping up a grape. Try scooping up a grape and a spoon with your hands. It's impossible. You, you know, yeah, have a grape? I think I think the spoon would be harder because you'd have to like maneuver. It's more dexterity. Now, if let's say I'm in the a, hips at that point, not if I clench. put a spoon up my butt and I feed Chris <laughs> some cereal, <laughs> then that is a different thing because that's a spoon based <laughs> objective. <laughs> Do you have to scoop up the cereal, or is yeah, it just, you got to okay. give the scoop and then you know drive it like the airplane coming into the hangar, Chris? Here <laughs> it comes. <laughs> <laughs> the train coming out of a tunnel. This sounds like a million dollar scenario. Can it be yeah. Cocoa Pebbles? Could be Cocoa Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? So that was what I was talking to Chris about before the podcast. Okay. It seems like a reasonable conversation to have. Yeah. It's very scientific. Uh, is this what? Where, does your brain just go there? Like, what? Where are all the activities I can do with my butt? It, it went there today. I don't. I don't think it always goes to butt. But specifically, picking up grapes was where you went. I don't know why you, it was a grape. <laughs> yeah. Did it just, yeah. Maybe because grapes roll easy. You might, you might have a problem, Gavin. <laughs> well, to me, he didn't bring up grapes before. We were talking about juice. He was talking about apple juice. Oh, you made fun of me because of my manly apple juice, my grown-up apple juice, and you said that grapes. <laughs> <laughs> like what's if you if you're on a plane and they get down to you, and they say, "Can I get you a drink, Mister Free?" And you said, "What would be a kid's drink to you?" Like if you said. I'll have the fruit punch. Was that was that a, is that a kid's drink to you? Would you get a glass of milk? I think milk is the kid's drink. Like you know, no, nobody drinks milk on a plane. There's somebody <laughs> in our office that drinks milk. He drinks chocolate milk, and I love the fact that he drinks chocolate. Oh, milk. should we try and guess who it is? I said it specifically to you the other day that I love that this guy is drinks Miles? chocolate milk. No, oh. no, you probably wouldn't guess it. It's just like he's such an all-American kid that the fact that he drinks chocolate milk. As a grown up, just like <laughs> I complete the image of me. It's Caleb. Oh, <laughs> I see that. He's walking around, he's drinking chocolate milk. I'm like, he's, he's got like his baseball cap on and his like hair sticking his out. His freckles. Yeah. He, he looks like someone sent like a uh, like an eight year old through a time machine. Yeah. But they only like changed halfway into an adult. <laughs> he looks like his name should be Timmy. <laughs> he like shaves like once every two months or something like that. <laughs> married. It's, though. it's always weird to me. Yeah, because he's like he's married. I'm not. Did you go to his wedding? No, me neither. When did you start shaving on a daily basis? Do you shave on a daily basis, Chris? I do. Yeah. When did that happen for you? Let me guess. You probably was like twenty three. No, I've always had facial hair. It's just never come in like fully. Um, like yeah, probably sixteen. Shit, 15, really? 15, yeah. 15, 15. I don't know. I, didn't, I, didn't I didn't remember. I, was, I was like, I remember being in, embarrassed or something about because I was like, I was getting like a weird little like the little stash. The catfish thing. mustache? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I so I started like stealing my mom's razors, her leg razors and shaving oh. it. Oh god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that thing must have looked no. like just had well, divots in it. Dude, I, not not her. I would get a, I got a fresh one. Okay. Oh. And <laughs> And then you. I was using did that. Did you not live with your dad? Or did your dad not shave? Uh, you do you no, not razors? at that time I live. No. Okay. Um and then so yeah, I was using that and then she was like she found all these ra- that I had one of her razors, and she like I got you some razors. Aw, yeah. that was nice. Yeah. How much did you cut your face up when you first started shaving? It wasn't a lot, it, not a lot, because you didn't have to shave often or very much. You know? So you take your time. <laughs> just like be <laughs> I well, it's like it's ju- it was just like here, and it would take like three months for it to grow <laughs> back. I don't think I've ever done like a, a razor wet shave and not cut the crap out of myself. I've so, never done that. I set up this conversation as one of those dumb segues to reading the Harry's Razor. <laughs> <and> Smosh- <laughs> but now I feel like we're way too deep <laughs> to where I just feel like now it, now I'm sitting over here feeling like I've I've created this conversation which you guys are having spontaneously, but I'm like, now it feels like it's <laughs> forced. I can for kind of tell when that's happening because we're having a conversation and you're just sat there like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my time to interject to tell you that this episode of the Rushi Podcast is brought to you by Harry's. Everyone at Rajit loves shaving with Harry's products. Their razors offer an incredibly close shave and leave our skin feeling so smooth, not like Chris's mother's leg razors. <laughs> For decades, 
On, uh, big razor company has relentlessly increased prices and reaped okay. immense profits at the expense of their customers. So Jeff and Andy, two ordinary guys who were fed up with getting ripped off, started Harry's to fix shaving by taking less profit and selling directly to you over the internet. Harry's offers their blades at half the price. With Harry's, you get everything you need for a close, comfortable shave, a weighted ergonomic handle, five precision engineered blades with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, and a travel blade cover. Harry's is just so confident in the quality of their blades, they want you to try their shave set for free. You heard that right. Just cover shipping when you sign up, and they will ship it to you. Plus, as a special offer for fans of the show, go to harrys.com right now and enter code ROOSTER at checkout to get a post-shave balm also for free. That's harrys.com, code ROOSTER. Thank you, Harry's, once again for making the Rooster Teeth podcast possible. Thanks, Harry's. I uh, I have never been someone who used the after bomb that much. Like a lot of my shaving habits, I established as a teenager when it was like if I, like if I just like put the razor the wrong way, I would just get a rash there. You know. Now, actually, you see me shave. I don't even use shaving cream. I just like grab my thing and just just shave you my. Are but you also right? have. But you also when I get have out of the a- shower. I you have a dry bother. razor, though. Boop. You have a dry razor. I though. do now. I have a. I have. A, I have another razor. But when I use a normal blade, I just go like that. So, dude, for me, I mean, I don't know about you guys. I have super dry skin. It starts to get like all like old lady y and just like papery. And when it gets super dry or like powdery, I guess you get ashy. I get ashy. Yeah. And uh, ashy Jenkins. I do. <laughs> I do. Um, and it actually sometimes stings. Like my skin is so dry. So and it gets. Well, you grew the, up like, in a very dry environment. I did, but uh, my skin gets especially bad after shaving because it almost like takes off the the top layer or something. So the for me having something afterwards like a like a lotion or a balm is a must. Just gotta so, have you know, it. Hmm. Gotta have it. It's do important. you ever do you see you shave your legs? Do you ever do you ever have to do anything up here with this? Ever? Yeah. I once got my face waxed. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That? I w- painful as shit, and then I got a huge breakout, and oh. then I decided never to do that again. That's how with Dan. I was you know, guys. He ripped the wax off his chest and got the huge breakout. He well, bled. Yeah, that's not good. Well, uh, um, yeah, uh, Blaine waxed for eleven little roosters. He waxed his chest. Yeah, he waxed his chest, um, mm. like where where his suit showed. Uh huh. And uh, and he got a hu- a horrible breakout because he immediately went to the gym. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you can believe it, of Blake. Not the most um, sterile of environments. And the you're gym. you're not supposed to sweat or do anything for at least eight hours because your skin is super traumatized. All of those pores are open because hair They've just got ripped, ripped out of them. So uh, and if anything with- gets in there, then it's gonna it irritates it and it becomes like this huge issue. Uh, and so then he had a huge breakout and had to wear a cover up on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> it is unfortunate. It does seem like once you remove the hair, you're done. It's like, eh, no big deal. Nothing can go wrong at that point. But it gets like the Dan thing, like in the, the follow up videos to that, Dan had that thing going on his chest right there. What is it called? Dermat- not dermatitis. What is it? Called? Folliculitis. Yeah. Wasn't that what it was called? I just so. call it bullshit because it's the worst. We didn't even put that video out. Which one? You what? haven't put it out? Waxing Dan's chest. Are you sure about that? Really? No, I waxed his leg again, eventually. Is this the oh, camera? I guess I saw him in the pool video. Yeah. The one you guys shot at my house when he d- did the incredible mermaid thing coming out <laughs> of the water, which is incredible. But uh, yeah, he had it then, so I guess maybe that's what... Yeah. Well, I would think you would want to reference why he had that like weird patch. Nah. Stuff. Nah. We only put out like 50% of the stuff we shoot. Is the plan to put it out, or is it just your mothballed that one because it wasn't good enough? I didn't think it was good enough. I didn't think it was fast enough. Like, because when you're macro and like super close, everything moves through frame a lot faster than if you're wide. So I just didn't have the frame rate back then. That's why we redid it with uh, the newer camera. What's your newest video? The steel bar one? Yeah. That, I, I don't know. I couldn't understand how you guys were standing next to that machine with just basically low level shop goggles. I'll tell on. you how. I was like, is this safe to stand next to? And they were like, yeah, we always stand next to this. I was okay. Like, All right. <laughs> They, they literally not... busted like thousands of bars in that machine. Did they bust a bar before you you saw it? Like, did you do a test one, or was the first one that we see in the video was that the first one you saw break? Uh, we did get the first one on camera, but that isn't the one in the video. Got you. But you so you were the first time you saw one break. You're standing there just trusting these dudes. Yeah. I, man, 
I mean, there was a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Oh my god, you guys see what we have over there? No, what? Grape juice! Oh, oh wow. no way! You guys got grape juice? Did someone go shopping? Oh, we're in love. That's awesome. You guys are the best. Okay. So, so we have <laughs> we have yeah, uh, sparkling two red different grape kinds of grape and juice. And actual grape juice. See, it says, it's juice. That's how you know. <laughs> Alright, I want to read the Is ingredients. Is that 100% pure grape? Juice. Is it from Probably not. When's, what's uh, the last pure juice you drank? Oh, it's hundred percent. I drank juice. a. I drank a pure. Made crank. from filtered water, grape juice concentrate, citric acid. It's grape what, juice. What does that mean when it's concentrated? They froze it. Yeah, yeah it's basically it's, they mushed a bunch of grapes up into a like a, a frozen ball, and then they mix that in with some other stuff. Not sure why they go through the concentration. Yeah, like why, do, why is that a better process than just like juicing? I don't know. It, I think it's just no, because it makes it more compact and it keeps <laughs> longer and easier. On the front, it just says, not a low-calorie food. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, I love my dad. Hey, oh, He's, we got he was cups. a brilliant guy, but man, he would do some really dumb stuff. Sometimes, like when Atkins became a big deal and people weren't big into low carbs, he basically just thought carbs meant bread, and that was it. And he would, he would talk about his low-carb diet, and he said his favorite snack on his low-carb diet was a bowl of popcorn and a glass of juice. <laughs> I was like... Do you not understand what a fucking carb is? Well, and I showed it to I, him, and I, then he's like, "Oh, I'll switch to milk." And I'm like, "No, look, <laughs> look, just read the label. It's got, it's full of carbs." I, I, well, all right, I thought the same thing until but just right. now. What did you think a carb was? Right, Bread, Gavin. breads. Give this a go. Hey, give us like give things us a go. with like wheat. Wait a second. Wait a second. Did you have you never taken communion? What do they do for communion in in UK? Wine. Just straight up wine they give it to kids? Pass it it's down. like a sip of wine. Yes, yeah, wine. Okay. Why would you have grape juice? <laughs> I think we have grape juice. Yeah. yeah. And mm. crackers. Which was always my favorite part of church. I like that I had a glass <laughs> of grape juice. I literally haven't <laughs> drank <laughs> grape juice in years. I feel like I need to like make you sandwiches and cut the crusts off. Yeah, I know. Can I get some we're, carrots? <laughs> we're breaking <laughs> boundaries tonight. This will no longer be a kid's drink. <laughs> so it smells <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> How does it smell to you? Tomato juice is another thing too. They have tomato juice in the UK, right? It smells bad. <laughs> no, no, no. They have tomato juice. Tomato juice, sorry. Yeah, tomato juice. Need that for the Bloody Marys. There you go. So, do you somehow have left grape juice off the menu entirely? It's probably because it's really awful. No, you're. you're have, you, have you tasted it or just smelled it yet? Smelled it. Hey. From uh, Concentrate, cheers, according to cheers. Peter Hayes, our resident gift maker, from Concentrate means the juicing content was dehydrated and compressed. Nothing more. Period. He wrote nothing more. So not more. frozen. But it's usually frozen. Dehydrated. Well, if yeah, you buy it, the, if you buy concentrate at the store, it's in the frozen little cans. All right, I'm gonna take take a sip of this. All right. Oh, that's <laughs> rough. It just tastes like sugar and like. What do you think a grape is? What does that this is why taste kids like? drink. It's like it. drinking a memory. What is that? <laughs> 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 Can we stop the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I've had that before. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Did I have grape soda? <laughs> <laughs> that is rough. Sure, you said it was oh. such. What? He said it was such a thing. It's like drinking a. <laughs> I feel like smells and tastes are, are very closely linked with I memories. Just I get that. it in my eyes. So I... I'm, we're grape juice and I are very close. Like, yeah. do you ever just smell like? Something that you clearly haven't smelled since you were like seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you remember it's it. It's like, oh my God, it's like being at school. Like your grandparents' house. But you don't know what it is though. Yeah. And it just draws you back in. Yeah. I still remember that time that we were walking through Belgium. <laughs> That's disgusting. Drink Does it beer. smell like grape juice? No, we were walking through Belgium and we were walking through an alleyway, this dingy little alleyway between streets. We were just cutting through it to go from one street to the next. And there was, I mean, it was a, <laughs> like a one foot square spot. <laughs> Only one person could be in it at a time. And it smelled like the world's best smelling pancakes or something, <laughs> pa pastries. Yeah, or a waffle or something. And we had no idea where the smell was coming from, but we took turns standing in the house, <laughs> like, rotating. We were just like... I think we all took a couple of times. We, we were just <laughs> huffing the air in this little square. It's like, <laughs> it's so good. It's like, it's the best smelling alley. And then the other two would be like, oh, I can't, I've lost it. I can't smell it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were all walking through in a line and we all passed, we all stopped and we looked back, like, what was that? <laughs> that wonderful smell. So we stopped and went back and smelled it. And we tried to find where it's coming from and eat there, but there wasn't really anything there. So I recently read an article 
about an experimental technique. This is for you, Gavin. Where is they use good? sparkling grape. All right, I'm going to dump out my other stuff. You can, pour, you can pour I just mine. bottoms up. Good, good so this job. Is the same, but it, That's this is sparkling. the same, but it's fizzy. It sounds even worse. Oh, <laughs> it came out really slowly at first. Okay, kind of mad. It's not purple. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, magnetic brain stimulation. It's a technique they have, and it improves your precision memory, the, a precise type of memory. What are you talking about? Okay, so they take a magnet and they go zon, 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 on your head. But where did this come from? I don't know. Somebody's studying with magnets and pet no. Heads. I mean, where did this conversation? Is this from? based on the alley? <laughs> You're talking about memory. You're talking about memory and how smells lead to memory. And oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That jogged my memory. Oh, okay. That With I had read an article about. Did you smell something? <laughs> no, we didn't smell. <laughs> I smelled a magnet. <laughs> I smelled a magnet in the air. So you put a magnet on someone's brain. Josh Flanagan, by the way, told me a story. Now we're off on a tangent. He told me a story. I said, one of the things I want to do this year is I want to go see the Northern Lights. I want to do that for a vlog. And Josh goes, oh, I've been there. I've been to the Northern Lights. And I go, what are they like? He goes, they weren't there that night. <laughs> I said, what? He goes, yeah, they don't ever tell you that, but they're just, they might not happen. And you go all the way up there, and it's like, ah, not tonight. Bye. So you have to stay for a couple of nights to get it? <laughs> I don't know. He didn't ever saw them. He went, he did the whole journey, and then never saw the Northern Lights. One of those things that I imagine looks much better in person than it does on video. I saw a video of somebody flying into Josh wouldn't know. Reykjavik? <laughs> Reg 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 Reykjavik. 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 They're flying to Iceland, and they took uh, a video of the Northern Lights out the plane window. It was pretty fucking impressive. How's that different to being on the ground? Well, I could see more of them, and they were above them, which I also didn't know was even possible. Oh, so it's actually in the clouds. It's I, not in the, yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah, they were, they were, they were above I them. I thought it was like upper. I just thought it was space shit. Like it was, it was, the atmosphere was leaking or something. <laughs> That's not, I didn't actually think that. So I worry when the dumb we did make dumb science jokes that we have to say I don't actually believe that that there was a crack in the atmosphere. Just <laughs> leaking through. There's a hole, ozone hole. Yeah, we're going there. We're going Didn't to Australia, New Zealand. Up? That's where well, the hole is. It's over Antarctica, isn't it? It's um. That's I mean, why she has ashy sort of like... skin. She lived there. The hole is over New Zealand. I, I think it's really bad over I, New Zealand. I thought, I thought it was over the pole. I thought that's the thin part now, but it's like the hole has closed. It's still thin, but it's not as bad as it was. Because that gives me hope. Because it's not the 80s anymore, and aerosol hairspray is in this bit. Do you remember what it was in aerosol hairsprays that caused the ozone problems? No. Fluorocarbons. Those chlorofluorocarbons. Fluorocarbons. Was it chlorofluorocarbons? <laughs> yeah, because everything was like, oh, this is now has no CFCs. Yes, CFCs. Chloro chlorofluorocarbons. So that was really what did it? Was like canned goods? Well, I think that was the well, thing that like they associated meat. with it. You know, it's like that's the thing that you. Just tell people because that's the thing that they, the consumer can have an impact. Oh, so bad. Make it, <laughs> make a decision. <laughs> Anything like grapes. But I want to say it was also like air conditioning as well contributed to it, um, the way the air conditioners used to be, um, and other, other factors. But, you know, they always have to communicate something to people where they feel like they can have an effect. It's a lot funnier if you just think of it as like a lot of ladies with big hair killing the earth, though. <laughs> it was fucking Duran Duran. That's what did it. Do you know what? If you put. You should never fuck Duran Duran. No, Otherwise, yeah, don't the fuck world Duran Duran. If you pour ozone in a cup. Well, it's blue. You can do that? Yeah. Or you can pour ozone. Gavin, you're telling me you've had a cup of ozone, but you've never had fucking <laughs> grape juice? How never. is that fucking possible? I've never drunk ozone. <laughs> Explain that to me. How you've had ozone in a cup. <laughs> not had you it. don't know what fucking <laughs> grape juice is. What, what's, your, what's your verdict on grape juice? Rancid. Oh, you're... Nothing like a grape or wine. No, it's very sweet. It's very sweet. Grapes are sweet. Well, you know, they actually use a very specific kind of grape to make wine, and it's, if you eat the grape, it's awful. Is that what we because had? Because it's all, like, shriveled and, like, dry and, like, tiny and, like, really bitter. Hmm. They, they use, raisins. um... <laughs> <laughs> they, use the, raisins. They, use, they use the normal, like, the big grapes. That's just filler in wine. Yeah. That's not what makes the wine the wine. What was I drinking in the Hitman immersion? I don't know. That was... Uh, was it grape juice? Carbonated grape juice. Was it really? Probably. Yeah, that's what that reminded me of. But white grape juice. <laughs> right. It, it tastes white. like rank so crap. You and drank I was... rank crap and didn't ask what it was? Well, I assume it's not anything bad if it's on set, you know, as a prop. I always But ask. I was doing a bit where I was like, I want to pour 
I'm going to just chug all these. And I was like, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was pouring them all into one. It was rank. It was that. I always ask a prop person, can I drink this before I do it? Because I'm always afraid I'm going to drink it. Like, that was nail polish remover and glue. Well, or, something like well, that. or you might take a nice shot and then find out that it was just water. Which we've done before. Yeah, mm. we've had that happen before. Worst thing I've drunk at Roost Teeth was the, the toilet. Go ahead. What? From a Fallout video. Oh, right. Oh. The poop toilet. And that was, I was adamant that that be in the video, that you had a drink from the toilet. Thanks. Yeah. Did but it was a brand new toilet. It had like old wall in it. Though. Yeah. Like paint chips in it. We well, did, uh, I mean, they, 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 uh, what do they call that? They uh, distressed it. Antiqued it. I'm sure it's fine. Our cats drink out of the toilet all the time, and they're still up and running around. Except for around. that fucking Joe the cat. Except for Joe the cat. He's got this thing now where he won't drink out of the toilet. He bugs me and her all the time. Why he do you want to, him to drink out of the He wants to drink toilet? out of the sink. I close on my toilet. I, I, I don't care if he drinks out of the toilet. I don't give a shit. But if, what if he walks on your face and he's got a uh, poop? Pool. He's not going for a dive in. He's like, it's not like a waiting pool. He's got a stand in it to drink from well, it. How he... many cats do you think go around standing in water, Davin? What? You ever owned a cat? By the way, your cat, by the way, super cute. Your new cat? Yeah. Very cute. Little cat. Columbo? Very he's, cute. A cat has to put his paws in the bowl to drink from it. He's, yeah, but there's he's, parts he's of the bowl wrong. that doesn't have water. There's fucking Joe the cat drinking this out of my sink. Thing. He he wants to drink That's out, how I of drink the out of the faucet. Sink. What's, what's wrong? And That's he also fresh. W- like he because he wants you to turn the faucet on and off whenever he <laughs> decides he wants fucker. to drink. Can I film that in slow mo? Actually, awesome. was that from your Snapchat? Is that what that's from? Uh, that's no, it's from Twitter. Oh, it's on Twitter. Uh, but he's decided that's his new thing. He'll either do that or he'll uh, drink out of your copper cup. And we got him a fountain because. On Twitter, everyone said, get the cats a fountain. I, my cat did that. I got him a fountain. Everything's great now. I don't have to worry about it. We got him a fountain. This is a, like, this is a hard fountain to put in the house because it's a flower. It's a little flower. It's a green flower, and uh, it Amazon. fountains water at the top, and then it, and then it Filters drips it. off the petals, and it's, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, well, do we have to have this around? It's a plastic flower, basically. I bet it doesn't look good. It doesn't, doesn't look, look good. good. It doesn't look good. It doesn't uh, look good. So we got that in the hopes that Joe the cat... Would drink it if he really wants running water. Nope. That's nope. it. That's the f- nailed that's it. The fountain. That is the exact fountain. They, they found a photo of it right away. That's the stupid flower fountain that we have. And Joe the Except cat no will cat not touch it. Ours. <laughs> Drinking. I wouldn't want to drink out of that. It's he'll, he'll jump up on it, look at it, sneer, and then like walk away, and then like wait for someone to turn the faucet on. That's right next to the fountain. He just wants grape He's juice. He's the worst. <laughs> that's, all, that's all he cares about. That, but that is not the most annoying thing that Joe the, Joe the Cat does right now. The most annoying thing is... He does a lot is, of annoying things. He has now started this habit that he has where he will go out in the night and he'll hunt for mice. Then he gets a mouse. Then he brings it back into the house to his little cat door. Comes, uh, comes through the cat door, goes up the stairs, comes into our bedroom with the mouse. And the reason I know that is because I wake up at 3.30 in the morning... And I hear this. I'm like, what is that noise? Something woke me up. And then I hear this. At the end of the, end of the bed, like over the edge, down by the foot of the bed on the floor, I hear, crunch, <laughs> crunch. He's just chomping his way through a mouse. Like, just has, and I, I will sometimes shine a light on him to see how big this mouse is. But you just have to kind of wait it out. The like, worst part, though, the worst part is when the mouse isn't dead yet. Yeah, and then he chases it all over the bedroom. He brings us a live mouse and then <laughs> is like <laughs> chasing it back and forth until he kills it. So does he... It. Finish the mouse? Is there like mouse? No, guts there's left? nothing left when it's done. Well, and then he tries to get up in bed with us and get away. <laughs> once, once or twice, <laughs> brush your teeth. Once or twice, he's left suspicious bits. We don't know what they are, oh, but like I'll see something bits. on the floor and just it doesn't look like anything specific. It's not like a tail or a paw. It's just like there's some wobbly bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like just gut. there, and it's it's not normally he cleans up after himself, but occasionally he wants us to know. Does he ever boke up an old mouse? What? Uh, Chunda. What? Not to my knowledge. Our other cat's the one that throws up constantly. Constantly. The cat throws up all the freaking time. Not Meg? Yeah. She's she has eat, severe eat, eat. eating disorder. She's, yeah, she's got problems, man. She's got problems. We like that cat a lot. She's a really sweet cat. She's, uh, she's Ashley's cat. I should be clear about this. Very nice. She yells at me every morning, this cat. Six in the morning, every day. She jumps up on my side of the bed and just walks back and forth on the edge of the bed, just meowing nonstop at me. Non freaking stop. To where I, I like argue back with her every morning now is what I do. And does it wake you up when that happens? No. Good lord, she does it every morning. I have to record her so you can hear this. It's just like a nightmare. And, and she's and she's Siamese, so it's loud. Yeah. So, rah, rah, rah. 
Okay. So I also want to thank <laughs> our second sponsor for the Reach Podcast this evening, Jack Threads. When was the last time you ordered clothes online and got to try them on before paying for them? Never, right? Well, that's exactly what Jack Threads excuse me, jackthreads.com does. You can bring you know, sure, you can try anything on at home for free and you only pay for what you keep. Whether it's a big name brand or the Jack Threads in-house line, you can be sure you are 100% in love with the items you ordered before spending a cent. Now, I have to say that whenever we have a new sponsor, Gus tends to get the benefit of, you know, like he'll get the Jack Threads box and he'll get to pick out the clothes. And he is looking rather dapper. I tweeted a photo of him from Sundance and he looked very nice. He was all besweatered. He looked good. Did you guys see that photo that I put out of him? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he was on a VR panel for YouTube. So he fit in very well with all the highfalutin film types that go to Sundance Film Festival. Go to jackthreads.com and enter code ROOSTERTEETH when you submit your tryout for 20% off anything that you keep. That's jackthreads.com, code ROOSTERTEETH, to save 20% on anything you keep. Never buy before you try ever again. I love, th- I love this because I hate going and trying on clothes, dude. I really hate it. I really hate it. I do too. If I have to try on three things, like get in that little booth, and I got to try on three different things, I'm done. That's it. That's all I got in me. I can take off three pairs of pants, put on three pairs of pants, and then I'm just miserable and I got to get out of there. I don't understand. Can't stand it. When people go and try on stuff and then like you don't end up walking away with something. That's frustrating. Well, what, is it doesn't what if none of them are good? Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why I don't like shopping. <laughs> <laughs> My problem is like if I get something that works, I'm like I will take four of these because I just don't want to buy anything else. So <laughs> if I find a shirt that fits and I like the way the shirt fits, then I buy it in three different colors. Not what Steve Jobs did. He would just have the same outfit. No, that I do definitely like. I went through a phase where I did that, where I wore the the polos with the bunny on them and jeans. Oh, you had a bunch of those. Oh, I had a ton. I had like eight. <laughs> well, you th- did you think he was wearing the same shirt every day? I honestly, I didn't care enough to notice. Yeah, probably, but yeah. I don't really notice people's clothes either. Yeah, I feel you. There you go, Ash. All the effort you put into putting on nice clothes every day. If, if honestly, unless I take it in, if I were to walk out of here and someone to quiz me on what every person was wearing, I would have absolutely no idea. You would remember what I'm wearing because you got to touch it. That's true, because it is absurd. It's suede. It feels like all grippy. So Sally LePage is here, and we should have Sally join us, but I, w- I want to find out two things. I want to find out if she's ever had grape juice in her life. Can we-, we should get another glass for Sally. Uh, and then I also have to find out, what was the thing we were talking about earlier we were going to come back and ask Sally about? This biology thing. Uh, somebody, on the, somebody on Twitter tell us what we were going to ask Sally about earlier. We said specifically we were going to wait and talk to her about it. It so, was a thing, and it Also, was we're at the point of the podcast. Remind us is if there's any story we started to talk about but then dropped. We're oh, at that point in the what. podcast. What did we drop? Why I bled my nose. All right, Why did you Sally, your nose? Sally's a great time to come in if you want to come on in. Does she have a mic? No, I do. Hey, I Sally, how are you doing? On me. I'm all right. Let's get in. I probably should have moved. I cannot believe you've never had great juice. Thank you. See, there Thank you, go. you. I knew you'd you come on here again. I have been listening from the control room. <laughs> you've had grape juice? I can I, I, Grape juice is probably my favorite juice when I was younger. A, where hey, do you buy it? And B, it's rank. It's well. I want to try the grape juice that you've got. That was are, the that's sparkling. There are that's two Kevin. types. There's the type that smells like grape smelly jellies, and there's the actual decent stuff. What are smelly jellies? What's smelly um, jellies? gel pens that are scented according to the color of. Mm. So you had the purple uh. ones were always grape scented. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Does it seem like a bad idea that we're teaching children to snuff s- sniff markers that intently? We have scented markers in the U.S. as yeah. well. But when you get to a certain point in life, if you smell a marker, you're, it's like xylene, and you're gonna eat a hole in your brain. But you're not supposed to like stick it up your nostril, smell it. It just smells as you're, not you're writing. They American always say to kids. waft. <laughs> American yeah, kids. It's got to yeah. waft up like from that. the paper. But uh, let me ask you this. Do you consider grape juice to be a child's drink? Uh, only in as much as any other juice is. So like apple, so, like, juice, apple juice is, is totally a kid's fine drink. to drink? Well, so I, I do agree with you on cloudy apple juice. Cla- cloudy apple I juice is amazing, though. Cloudy apple juice is slightly older than normal apple juice. I think it's because just like 
when you're younger, you have either orange juice or apple juice or milk. Like those are the kind of three drinks that you right. ever drink. Or but why, why do you right. have to grow out of that though? But I don't. I, I still drink juice. I'm, I'm going to feel self-conscious about getting apple juice forever now. Why? Because you said it's like a kid drink and I'm, I always I, order yeah, it I, So I wouldn't. Just <laughs> of I in no way think, oh, I can't have this juice because it's a kid's drink. I also want to point out it was in a bottle that was half the size of all the other bottles <laughs> that were on that same shelf. Right? <laughs> Well, yeah. So? <laughs> <laughs> it's very sugary. Right. Only because apple juice is so precious and you, they can't make too much of it. I see a glass coming in from the side. So, well, I if, if she's already trying it, you just juice. get to enjoy some apple juice or some, some grape, grape juice. juice. And the sparkling stuff. Have you never had schlur? No. Is this, is this so related sh- to slurm? <laughs> what? what? Slurm? Here, here's here's no what's one. disturbing me sitting <laughs> over here, which no I realized the future. when Sally was asking Gavin about not having grape juice. Gavin worked in a grocery store as a stock boy. He didn't encounter <laughs> I grape worked juice in fruit and veg. Where oh, you were in fruit and veg. <laughs> where I'm dealing with actual grapes. Do you have the non-sparkling? Yeah. <laughs> we do. Unfortunately, it's not. I chilled. also worked in Waitrose, oh, okay. and I never shopped at Tesco. So maybe Waitrose. If you're in wa- Waitrose, it. definitely has grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> Waitrose is the posh one. Um, so Schler is the kids training you how to drink wine for those that don't like wine. Um, so Schler is. Um, it's it's served in like a champagne bottle. Yeah. Um, but it's completely non-alcoholic, very sweet. A little bit um, like that right there, right? A little bit. Yeah, but w- you rarely get red ones. But yeah, a bit okay. like that. So it's the sort of thing that you'd have at a sleepover when you were thirteen if you wanted to feel a bit fancy. Sounds like or, a great time. Sounds like Gavin missed out on the fun sleepovers. Yeah, basically. So, or an immersion suit. When's the last yeah. time you had a sleepover? <laughs> Two years ago. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really personal question, isn't it? It doesn't kind of just, we decided that we hadn't had a sleepover in years, and so we took mattresses into our friends' room. That's wonderful. So what qualifies sleep- as a sleepover? It's, it's got to be your same-sex friends to come over? Yeah. Or uh, just platonic? Yeah. Um, platonic, and uh, you go uh, friends good. friends' <laughs> house. I'd choice. say, you know, typically it'd be more than, like, you and one friend, but it might be, you know, you might have a whole threesome of platonic friends. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> is it a sleepover if you sleep with them? No. That's just shagging. Yeah. yeah. So you, you can't have, it's like sex is what makes it not a sleepover. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you bring a girl home. Tell us about your sleepovers. No, 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 no. But here's a question. <laughs> <laughs> what if my what little if you coach just, is there? But what about crashing at someone's place? Okay. So this does sleepover. Okay. If you just is crash it? there? Because it's like, all right, you went out, say so you went out drinking, and then you go back to their place and you pass out on their couch. Is that a sleepover? No, if we have to define it, I would say no. I feel like a sleepover is an intentional thing. Yeah, a sleepover is predefined like in, as a sleepover. Planned. The purpose of the event is to sleep yeah. over. And okay. usually the no, person it... hosting would actually like get out in the living room and like sleep over, right? Yeah. They wouldn't just go yeah, into they their all bedroom. Like, and everyone like yeah. bunks down together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you I... don't sleep. So so if the if intention you... is to sleep, it's not a sleepover. I would say if you crashed at your no. friend's house and they came out of their bedroom and slept in the <laughs> living room with you, that would be a sleepover. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, you know, happen? I was I was gonna <laughs> offer to people for New Year's. I was gonna <laughs> offer people if you drink too much, feel free to sleep here because we have additional beds that you can sleep mm-hmm. in. But I also felt like that would be a little creepy to offer that. Why? I don't know why. I, I, that's solely on me. That's in my head. Because I don't you, think because you know they're creepy. too drunk. I don't think that would have been. Creepy. I think that's a nice like. Oh yeah, if you need to. You drink, you drink that's yeah, exactly what we always do. Yeah. yeah, but also the way people leave parties too. It's like I looked up. It was three in the morning, and there and was just like suddenly eight of us no left. one's there. Chris was eating a bunch of pies, <laughs> and that well, was it. He, we were feeding him a bunch of pies. I mean, I was... He was doing his best to resist. We had these tiny little pies from a place called Tiny Pies, and uh, well they named. were all different sweet pies, and I overbought those as well. We had like 12 left, so I didn't want to throw them away, so I just started feeding them to Chris. And Can he you not just, just stick them in a fridge? Could have, but I also didn't want to be tempted by them the next day. Just stuck them in a Chris. <laughs> yeah, just give them to Chris. Plus, it's fun to see how many he'll eat. Pay attention. I went out with Chris the other night for drinks. We went out to the first annual CBBD, Chris and Bernie's birthday party, which I guess should be CBBP. But oh, I um, thought it was CD, C- B, like Chris and Mary's Bernie birthday. Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah birthday. Oh, because he's got a D. CD, CDBBD. So <laughs> Just annual, rolls off the tongue. I like that. I like that. First annual CDBBD. <laughs> the, um, how many, how fast can you say that? C D B B D B D. Almost got it. C D B B B D B D. Damn, it's hard. So that's triple B in that. C D B B B D. C D B B B D. I did it. I feel like you have to break up the two letters though. Like C D B B B D. There you go. You got it. So we went out drinking. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah. So when I was leaving, we were talking about what a great time it was and everything. Chris proceeded to give me a 
I think we kept count. It was eight hugs. Eight hugs. <laughs> he gave me eight hugs in the course of the one goodbye, and he wouldn't stop. Blaine just was shouting from across the bar, "Stop hugging him!" <laughs> I had just I had to start hugging people because I was feeling really left out. It wasn't Aww. one long hug. It was eight individual. <laughs> Are you Why? normally a hug sort of person? I'm particularly huggy, and I've been drinking. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been hugged by Chris. <laughs> really? You have to have. If I... I don't know. I don't Maybe know. it's because the day we met, I squeezed a lemon in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> it actually went in my eye. It Ow. missed. Yeah. Got it on video. Yeah. Slow motion? <laughs> it's not in slow motion. It might be. You should, it might be you, like, should, you should put it up as an RT, you should put it up as an RT life. Uh, one that was filmed five years ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Do I'm it. having a real problem. Are any of you doctors? Not yet. No. Okay, close enough. <laughs> Not medical. Close enough. <laughs> Don't tell me about your rash. I don't have a rash. <laughs> <laughs> we did uh, that on the last podcast. So I, I realized, so RTX Sydney is coming up very, very fast. It's the, the 4th and the 5th of February. And it, you know, it, this just occurred to me that in, uh, in a week, I'm going to be flying to the middle of summer. Yes, you are. I don't know about you guys. Do you guys put on like a winter coat? You have weight, you mean? You yeah. mean like hair? No, like layer of well, fat. Also, also, that does apply to hair as well. It, that was that was like a bushwhacking to get through all the hair on my legs. I can tell you what, but uh, also just like don't you know, you tell people everything. <laughs> you eat, uh, you know, you're like you eat a bunch during the holidays, and you know you put on a couple extra layers. And you're like, it's fine. I have until like May. Are we talking oh. fat layer or clothing yes. layers? No fat. fat layer. Just talking okay. around the edges of it. Fat <laughs> no, layer. I got fat, but um, I realized I have like a week and a half to like undo the entire holiday. Because I'm gonna go to the beach and so, yeah, but my swimsuits don't fit now. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so I'm get desperately trying swimsuit? to get in shape. Um, Are you gonna be like on I video it's on the beach? To change me. No, but I'll be in. We're front going to the beach. Since, when was this part of the plan? The people that you beach? know. You clearly aren't in the Slack channel. Oh, what um, are we doing? Going to the beach. What beach are we going to? Don't know yet. Anyway, manly. I uh, never go to any Slack channel, by the way. I stay. I, I don't like that. Slack and I'm sucks. not. I know. It's awful. It's I wank. know. Hey, so, uh, Control, I just sent you guys some. Um, I started running. I should probably get on Slack. Like, you know, 90 minutes, two hours a day. No big deal. Um, and I hurt my foot. Now I can't run. I can't walk. Exercise isn't actually a good way of losing weight. Uh, that, com that combined with a calorie deficit, though. But the calorie deficit is far more important. Yeah, but I, if I can do both, then if have, you can do both, it's better. Chance. And if you can do both, it's better for long-term weight loss. But actually, short-term weight loss, it's pretty much entirely. In so you should just wait, not wait, wait, eat food. Exercise is bad. No. Okay. <laughs> 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 Exercise See? has myriad benefits. Weight loss isn't particularly one of them. Maintaining, not putting on weight, is mm -hmm. one of them. But actually losing weight, exercise isn't particularly good. Because if you think about how much exercise you have to do to burn 200 calories. It's a lot. Yeah. One single chocolate bar. It's this, You can lose so many more calories through Not dieting eating. than you can through exercise. And they've recently seen... But how can you lose what you never had? <laughs> deep. Real deep. What was the most, Gavin, how much, uh, you, you never know. I'm going to ask you how much more you weigh than what you currently weigh. What's like the highest you've been away from that? But you actually never know what you weigh. Like, I, you don't even know you weigh now. I weigh like 10 stone. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> so. What is stone? It's 14 pounds. Right? So I, I use You're like 140? Is it, yeah, like is, it, is it 14 pounds or 14 kilos? It's no, definitely 14 not 14 kilos. kilos. <laughs> then I'd be 140, 140 kilos. 140 kilos, which would make him about 280 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's very dense. <laughs> that's well, in, that's in up some a question. <laughs> But they recently just found, or I, I guess a study, they, they suspected this for a while, uh, that there's a correlation between calorie restriction and longevity as well. That yes. You can um, extend that's your That's mostly life. protein restriction because proteins are... Okay, I'm going to preface this with don't not eat protein, okay? Um, so proteins, the breakdown products are slightly toxic, like ammonia and urea are all from breakdown of proteins. Um, and so... As humans, we typically overeat in our protein. Everyone's always like, oh, like, yeah. if you're vegetarian, oh, where are you going to get your protein from? We get protein from so many sort of vegetables have protein in them. Mm -hmm. But if you don't eat all protein, how are you going to get swole? Right. But we mostly eat enough protein anyway. We mostly overeat the amount of protein. I mean, it's not particularly bad for us. But if you do restrict the amount of protein that you eat and just generally caloric restriction, mm -hmm. 
the science roughly says that you will live longer. So that's where the 5-2 fasting diet comes from. Right. Where you fast for two days, eat normally for five days. Jack yeah. does that. How, so, how much? He just doesn't eat for two so days? So far, when you're fasting, I think it's up to 500 calories in that day. Or yeah, maybe I think Jack does calories. six. He's so I think that's half a glass though. of grape juice. <laughs> it might yeah, be half a glass. Pretty much. Um, and so that probably makes you live longer, but it's not, it's been shown in rats. Humans, they've kind of shown it, but they've not really done long-term studies on it. So don't just go out there and just completely start fasting. Because also there are other problems with fasting, like really weird blood sugar levels. But actually extreme fasting can also reverse early diabetes. I really? feel like, but you need just see your doctor if that's the thing for you because we're like talking I extreme. Don't want to Plus, you want to be diagnosed with diabetes before you try. Well, that. Yeah, 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 but if you but it so if you catch diabetes early enough, if you fast enough, it changes your body's response to insulin enough that it reverses it. Um, Why is protein bad? Like, so pro. What can you eat? What, do you, what <laughs> Why are you yelling? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Why is rest? protein so bad? Why I I. You're only getting I six hugs like, when you, <laughs> you exercise and then yeah. you like um and protein you eat is good. protein you need to protein gain muscle. To build muscle. And then but and so yeah. it's like, well, you need low carb, eat protein, and like I found out white rice is bad for you and all this other th it's like No what one you... food is bad for you. No one food is well actually very few <laughs> foods right. are bad for you. <laughs> um no one food is good for you. There's the thing called the halo effect, where if we see something as good in one respect, we assume that it's good in every respect. So for example, low fat yogurt, we think, oh, it's good because it's low fat. Normally they replace the fat with sugar. Now we're finding that sugar is worse than fat. So actually low fat yogurts can be worse for you than full fat yogurts. Um, that's the whole thing on halo effect. It's also why we think that pretty people are smarter because we think, oh, they're pretty. Therefore they must be good in every other aspect. Um, it's a common thing across the board. We, actually, we yeah. actually had a discussion about this was if you had to choose to be incredibly intelligent mm -hmm. or incredibly beautiful, mm -hmm. what would you s select? Knowing what you know about the world now. And I was surprised by the number of people who said, oh, I'd just rather be pretty. I'm you pretty know. sure I said I'd rather be pretty, and that was because everyone will just pretend that I'm smart. That's what I'm saying. That's what that Sally said. You and I will be dumb effect. enough to believe them. Yeah. Well, the smart and then people, I'll feel very good. Dunning-Kruger effect. Are, yeah. Smart people tend to be more miserable. Yeah, I think dumb people are happy because they're, they're idiots. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know nothing. They just to don't know all the problems. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean yeah, to Yeah, protein. Yeah. Um, protein contains nitrogen. Um, whereas carbohydrates is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Protein mm -hmm. also has nitrogen attached to it. Nitrogen forms some weird compounds um, like ammonia and urea, all of which are kind of toxic to your body. So we try and That's why excrete we, them. It's called urine. It's called urine because it has urea in it. And ammonia. Yeah, so ammonia is worse for you than <laughs> urea. Face. And so we convert our ammonia into urea, which is safer, and we excrete our urea. Birds, don't we, they excrete uric acid. So the white stuff in bird poo is the equivalent of their wee because they don't want to lose all that water. So they use uric acid, which is a super concentrated form. So what does their poo look like? The poo is the... So you know You've bird poo is bird white poo? and brown? Yeah. The brown is poo and the white gotcha. is wee. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they, okay. Um, yeah, they um, but those, <laughs> so if we eat lots and lots of protein, um, it kind of takes a metabolic toll on our body. So it's, it's hard to break down. We've got to get rid of it. And so the thought is, is that maybe eating lots of it kind of contributes to aging, but this is still only a hypothesis. It has a lot of testing to be done. We still need very much protein for muscle growth and repair and general cell repair and everything. Like all the enzymes in your body are made of protein. Um, we, okay. we, yeah, protein yeah. is what does the stuff in your body. So don't just stop, stop eating, eating protein. Yeah, I if I wanted um, to lose weight yeah. and reduce calories, could I just eat only celery? No. Well, according, I mean, according you, to Fable, that's how you lose weight. <laughs> well, you would have well, a if vitamin we're deficiency. Yeah. How, over what length of time? Like, like for a, a day? Week, a week of celery. Uh, you would feel so bad get after that. I feel like you would eat a person after that. <laughs> but even though my stomach would be full of celery? Well, I mean, you could you just, just not eat. And it's like, we can last for a couple of weeks without eating food. Woof. So, I mean. Well, that's not good. No, then you it's start called to, like, starvation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yourself up. Um, it God, depends Chris. how extreme. Well, I'm, I'm like it. trying to like no. All right, but there's also my like protein, if someone is starving, eat. you can't actually just give them like if they're on the verge of of dying of starvation, you can't just give them food and they survive, right? That's not a thing you can do. Isn't that what happened in concentration camps? They had to like 
not give people food after yeah they like they, them. they couldn't feed them a bunch and so a lot of them still died even though they had access to food now because their organs had already shut down you mm. can't feed rich food certainly um and it's quite possible it depends on the extent of starvation but you will start self-digesting the bits that are needed well, that's why i was needed. thinking celery is perfect because then i wouldn't be hungry and my stomach would have stuff to do oh, still you would be hungry. still get hungry i'd still be hungry with a stomach full of food yes oh weird so when we were on the show the and amazing your blood race, sugar levels oh my god the people who <laughs> produce the amazing race they also produce big brother and they produce survivor as well and they talked about is that like a bad girls thing? Yeah, a little bit. Where they put them on an island and they have competitions and it lasts for a they, while. They don't generally like drink their own urine or anything like that. But especially in earlier like. seasons, th there was scarcity of food, well beyond what they were used to, and so people would go in these huge caloric deficits over many weeks, like two or three weeks. And then when they get eliminated from the show, they put them on a boat and you know motorboat them away, and then they could eat whatever they wanted to. <clears throat> and they did. The producer was describing like some of the stuff these people would eat. A woman ate an entire jar of peanut butter going back. Peanut on the butter boat. is so good for starving people, though. That's what they literally they ship out peanut butter in it, cases of famine. So miserable, she said, though, because like oh, she just yeah. wasn't prepared after Her all that just... time. Yeah, just attack it. Yeah, so. but it's incredibly nutrient rich, mm -hmm. calorie dense because it's got a lot of fats in it, but they're good fats. Um, so yeah, if you're starving and need to put on weight, then you should eat lots of I love chunky peanut or peanut butter. Chunky or smooth? Peanut. Either. I just don't like it with chocolate. Like Americans go ape for like yeah, Reese's and all that crap. I don't want a chocolate peanut butter. Or anything. Oh, I you're like them both. Insane. Why? No, that's What's wrong, wrong with you. That. Just don't like the mix. They're natural allies. It's good. No, they're not. It's good. Get them away from each other. They're okay together, but it's I don't see not, the hype. It's just sickly. I want to thank our third sponsor, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to thank our third sponsor for tonight's Rooster Podcast, Squarespace. Thanks, Squarespace, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Podcast. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create a website or online store. They have beautiful, award-winning designer templates, 24-7 customer service, and domains. Now, we've always said, I think, every time we've had Squarespace as a sponsor, how important it is to have your own domain name. I actually have Bernie.com. And I've had it for years, and there's that, you know, very popular RTAA that was about the Bernie.com, uh, you know, debacle that I went through trying to... You're not the thing. same Bernie as Bernie Sanders, Bernie. I'm though, not, it's you? a different one. That's no. a shame. Bernie, my, my Bernie spelled with a U. Uh, Actually, and it was fine. Like, I tell him that all the time. I, uh, yeah, I know. She always says, I wish you were Bernie Sanders all the time. <laughs> but I'm actually going to work on that website. I think I'm going to build that website out this year. That's one of my projects I have listed for the year. Uh, if you've been thinking about starting your own website or online store, start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash roosterteeth and enter offer code roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. Make your next move with Squarespace. Everybody make your own website. Everybody get your own presence on the web. Don't rely on Facebook and YouTube and all those other things. Just, uh, just have your own space because those things will eventually go away, whether or not you believe it. I recently just saw a thing about Snapchat where people are wondering if the Snapchat numbers are what they actually think they are. Because Snapchat What do is, people think they are? They're going through an IPO. Well, the valuation, last I heard for Snapchat, the valuation for the company was $18 billion. Wait, you're telling me that Snapchat is worth less than WhatsApp? Oh, I don't think so. I think WhatsApp was in that Americans same range. Americans don't use WhatsApp, though. The rest of the world does. It's true. It's true. I mean, for a lot of ways, because Facebook bought WhatsApp, it was almost like a defensive move because WhatsApp was in all the countries where... You know, no one has, there's not a huge Facebook adoption. That's how I got you on WhatsApp. But, but yeah, that's right. I had WhatsApp installed just to talk to her when she lived in Australia. That yeah. was the WhatsApp only is person. amazing for international conversations. But it's crazy that, that Snapchat can be worth $18 billion, but United Airlines, which has a fleet of airplanes, is a, was about a $4 billion company when it was, when it was acquired. That's just crazy to me. It's just, you know, and what does Snapchat or what does Uber have? You know, they just yeah, have nothing. technology and user base is what they have. That's it. Databases. People are worth more than big hunks of metal that fly. But they don't have people, they just have records of people. And they have the spectacles now. Let's not discount those. Sweet what? Specs. Spectacles? Have you seen the Snapchat? Right. I feel like I see nothing oh. on online with them though. I agree with you. I see people wearing them and they, they take you pictures do? of themselves on Snapchat I've, wearing them. I don't them. see many circle videos. Right. It's so you can record videos literally everywhere you go with their glasses that you wear. So it's just Google Glass done by Snapchat. Yes. But, but the, video, the video is a circle. 
It might also be that I like on Snapchat. I only follow people that I know and I'm, I'm close to in real life, and like one of them has those sunglasses. I only got Snapchat so I could try all the cool filters. Nice. I pretty much never the post. I, I just go on occasionally with my friends. I'm like, oh, I got a new one. That's it. Same. I like to go in. I'll look at the, look at the filters and go, hmm, and then just close it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But I, I'm sure I still count as an active user. I use Snapchat a lot. I use it just as much as texting. Really? really? Yeah. My very first Snapchat that I made, I was walking home and I was just like, I'm going to film my legs as I walk home. And I almost stepped on a dead bird. And it's like, it <laughs> I would have made a great it was Snapchat. on video and I just posted that. I was like, that was a perfect first Snapchat. Yeah. Oh, this is something we should ask Sally about from previously. This is a very weird event. When we, one time when we. Should I be worried? Yeah. Worried. You should feel worried. It's yeah. very like apocalyptic. Uh, we went to go look for our third office that we're moving into as Rooster Teeth. And we were walking to the office. And one of the guys that said, oh, this dead bird, don't step out. He's like, oh, and he stepped over it. And then we were commenting how easy it was to park. At the downtown area where we were moving, it was empty on a, on a weekday. And we were like, why is there no cars around? Then we come to read that there was a mass bird die-off in Ooh. downtown Austin that day. And somehow we just skirted the roadblocks. So we were in the shutdown city different center. Different species of birds, or uh, same I, th- I don't think it was limited to a certain species. What or bird something. was it that you stepped over? We usually have it was a grackle. I friggin' love grackles. You do? Really? I think they're my spirit animal. They're so good. Cool. Good lord! They sound like robots when I hear them. They're Bernie amazing. They're noisy birds. and they're kind of this weird stretched out crotch. I just love them. Yeah. They've got these piercing eyes. Have you ever seen them in Austin when there's flocks of literally tens of thousands of them and they? No. The, there will be parking lots. <laughs> it's a where, racket. It's dark with them. Where Do you the, get all murmurations the power lines? of grackles? So we have starlings. In mm-hmm. the, actually, I think they're an invasive species there. Um, and you see these amazing videos where they're all in the air and they yeah. all sweep together. It's like swarms of them. Yeah. And like making the patterns. cool thing we have like that, we have a huge bat colony. Yes, Austin, I've seen yeah. that. That, that is very cool. But yeah, and then I read also at the same time there was mass bird die-offs at that same time in three other locations in the world. And all I could think was, oh, in the world. what caused this? Yeah. Wait, and so they shut off the street to protect people from the dead birds? They didn't know why the birds died. And so, so they're like, oh, this isn't safe. So often when you've got a mass animal deaths, it can be something to do with poisonous gases. Mm-hmm. So there was a really famous case, so famous that I don't remember many of the details of it, where... All of these humans in this village died pretty much overnight. They couldn't work out what it was. They lived next to a lake, and there had been some gas had bubbled up from the lake. Was it like an algae bloom or something like that? And I think this was um, literally gases from the rocks. Like, oh, just coming up through? Sulfuric yeah. or something. That kind of stuff, but more noxious. Mm. Um, and it just killed everyone in their sleep. Um, Good way to go. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, be- it's better if than... If you have to. ...to yeah. drawn out, Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that would be why they wouldn't want to have multiple people there, certainly. Um, but yeah, I think if it's happening in different places in the world, that's weird. And that's weird. just more like some kind of pandemic infection yeah. type. But even then, I mean, it's more likely going to be just coincidence that multiple bird deaths have happened in the same time. And because you noticed it, then you have the observation bias where you, right. that's when you notice all the other deaths happening I'm not spending all my other time looking for bird deaths around the world no. at that point in time so it, in answer to your question uh, first of all the date of this was January 8th 2007 so you know we almost we just passed the anniversary of it uh, it was dead grackles sparrows and pigeons were found okay and, so the common animals yeah police shut down 10 blocks in downtown Austin for several hours Monday after 63 birds were found dead in the street. 63? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were talking thousands. Oh, I, I, felt, I felt like I sold it as way more birds. You did. I did, Didn't yeah. Rooster Teeth that's make on me. a video about shagging a bunch of dead birds? <laughs> oh, we, <laughs> yeah, we did. What? what? <laughs> that was one of Chris and Marshall's first videos. No. <laughs> was it? And it's so. like Jack was in it with like... What? I don't remember. There what was like was something that Chris? came in the news. And Is that was... on the website still? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it might have <laughs> been like... like Sponsor only, or it's like first interviews show. with people who worked here about how they shacked a bunch of birds. <laughs> well, there, I don't. There was something in the news about all these birds dying or something, and people couldn't figure out. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't remember. It was <laughs> something topical. Can get a clip of that. I don't know. I'm on. I'm. I'm done. <laughs> was that your favorite? Favorite, for favorite you? short? Did he? Um, <laughs> it was about. Uh, it was about birds. I can't remember now. Do you guys have that picture that I sent you? That was cool. For the control room, do you guys have that photo ready? 
Someone, oh. someone, someone says a photo. They'll pull it up. I was going to ask you. Uh, in the mines, whenever they have birds. What? In the, the canaries? Like canaries. Mines. The okay, canaries. Yeah. Uh, why mines. is it? So they do That's that because mine. they'll have a, a canary in a mine or something. Or, yeah. Uh, and if the bird dies, yeah. they know that it's poisonous gases and you have to leave. Or they run out of oxygen. Yeah. Or, yeah, one or the yeah. other. Why how, Why is it that birds die first? Because they're smaller. And so they just die. Uh, so they're smaller. They have high. So they are. Uh, they need lower amount of um, poison to kill them. Because yeah, if you mind, metabolism. poisons is kind of a per kilogram thing. So like you need more poison to kill an elephant than you do to kill a shrew. Mm. Um, and so a smaller animal. Plus they um, have higher oxygen requirements. And so they will die at a lower. Okay, so the bird that is such a horrifying feeling to look in the cage and the canary's dead. I know I'm going to get the hell out of this mind like immediately. Surely the worst thing would be to look at the cage and see that someone forgot to put the canary in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, so were there any science fiction movies you saw this last year, 2016, that you really enjoyed? Arrival. Yes. Oh, I was gonna ask oh my God, I frigging Didn't loved that. Have a canary? that. It yeah. did. That's why I was yeah. asking about it too. So but I thought Arrival was the best movie of 2016. Everyone here likes La La Land, but. I didn't like, I like La La Land. Land. I thought La La Land was okay. Arrival but, was um, one of the best films Arrival I have fantastic. seen ever. It was just, it was, it's, and you can't talk too much about the movie. Yeah. I am amazed yeah. as well that I, I got to watch it without having any of it spoiled yeah, in and, any way. And I, I had my 14-year-old uh, son, we sat down, I said, he, I said, do you want to watch Arrival? Over the course of three weeks, he's like, no, no, no. I'll, I'll watch it later. I've seen the trailer, he's, he's, I know what it's all he's about. Like, I'm like, what yeah, is it? some sci-fi movie, movie yeah. blah, 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 like not really interested. I'm sure I already know everything that it's about. We're like, Watch the watch the movie yeah. with him, and now it's one of his favorite sci-fi movies yeah. of all time. It's, it's so yeah. good that I don't want to watch it a second time. It's one of those. It's films very different. Where I'm just like, I because I, it was one of those films where you sit there afterwards and you just don't want to look at the interviews or you just want to sit and think about what it yep. is that you've seen. Very thoughtful movie. And yeah. A very like deliberate storyline. Mm-hmm. And it's just really great fun. I think it'd be good to watch it? a mm-hmm. second time though, because you know what's happening. Yeah, they, they've probably hidden a bunch of cool stuff, like cool little elements that, like, oh, not really. I get it now. No, I've seen it. Not no, really. There's, um, I mean, there are a lot of movies that are a lot different on the second watch through. Um, Book of Eli not is a that. is a good one to watch the second time around. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that, um, you know, the first time you go through a lot of movies, you're experiencing it, and and you're like, oh, this is amazing, like, oh, this is crazy, and like, whoa, this, and then. Afterwards, you can go back a second time, and you have a like a a better appreciation for like breadcrumbs, how it's made, all that sort of stuff. And Book of Eli, I thought, was a fantastic example. Without to without getting too specific about it, what's the best it. version of that? Do you think of the movie that's that you can watch second time and it's great? I, Suicide Squad. Why? I could not uh, seriously. Uh, Arrested Development. Time. Arrested Development. It's not a movie, but Arrested Development. Well, it happens I, you I've watch it again. It. You watch Arrested. I mean, there's so many like inside jokes and like. Uh, gags. Yeah, and there's jokes that you wouldn't get unless you've already seen it. Wow. There's also like they have ones that pay off three seasons later. In a restaurant. Like they'll they'll mm-hmm. plant something and then yeah, seasons later it will actually like come up again well, that's and pay just off. Who. <laughs> yeah, right? Got to. Oh my god. Too many subplots that, that it goes too far with that. Ashley took me out to see the Christmas special, the one with the uh the ghost. Dr. Mysterio, the return of Dr. <coughs> Mysterio. Oh, yeah. the superhero. I quite liked that one because it wasn't I liked it, too. it wasn't too much in the we're going to thread this and we're going to thread it was just standalone nice yeah. simple. That's episode. the nice thing about the Christmas specials with Doctor Who I always thought is Not it's always. Like, really? They can be really weird hmm. and still follow on this weird arc. But uh, The Illusionist is a good one, good film to watch Ooh. twice, actually. Is it going to, have you ever seen the sci-fi film, very low budget, called Primer? No. You might just call it Primer. But it's, no, uh, it was made in, <laughs> it's made it in, Primer. Primer? Yeah. It's, uh, it was in <laughs> Dallas. Unless it's got, N, does it end in an A or an ER? ER. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. if it was an A, then it'd be Prima. Prima, like right. Like Prima Donna. But uh, it's, a, it's a time travel movie, and y- you figure some stuff out. As the time travel goes on, about who's like some people have replaced themselves, and there's different layers, and it, people have drawn charts for this movie. And when you watch it the second time, it's literally a different movie because you it's don't. It's impossible. It's do- like you think it's like, oh, yeah, there's two different timelines because there's like the original them and there's like past them, right? And then you read the chart, it's like okay, so there's eleven different timelines in the movie, and then you're trying to figure out like which who was who right. and which one, and like and it's too low budget. As well, like there's no effects in that movie. No, at one point he's it. carrying himself. 
unconscious, but like they couldn't afford to do that. It doesn't look good. Well, I think it's great. You check it <laughs> okay. out. Let's check it out. Cool. That, I'm still waiting for that uh, director to make like a, an appropriate or a, um, a successor to it that is worthy of what Primer was because he made Upstream Color and I just didn't really reson- didn't resonate for me. It's like uh, the guy who made you know, Darren Aronofsky. He made that first movie, and then he made things like the one with Hugh Jackman in a globe going through time. Oh, uh, oh, uh, time machine? No, no, it no. was like the the what's it called? The tree of Life. Tree of no, no, Tree of Life. Brad Pitt. The fountain. The fountain. The fountain. He did. Um, was the mathematician one? Pie. Pie. Yeah. And then he did. Uh, oh God, Requiem for he a Dream. He did do Pie. Requiem for a Dream. Oh man, he was both of those. Yeah. They're de- both depressing. Yeah, but that fountain was like a weird departure, man. <laughs> it's a very cerebral movie. It's like it, you know, when you try to do. I was like like futurists who try to study near future, but then if you go out far enough, you know, our vision of the future is very much based in our technology. Like in the '50s, when they talked mm-hmm. about what we're going to be doing in 2000, it was all about basically different ways we were going to be reading the newspaper, you know, because and they that, and like, they all still involved paper well, or then, cars. Then they thought that we would have cracked energy, whereas we instead cracked information. Mm-hmm. So they thought we would have unlimited energy, which is why we'd have hovercrafts and teleportation and that kind of stuff, whereas information they thought would be same as it was then yeah, but so instead if- information is just skyrocketed like we've got fiber optic broadband and ridiculous mm-hmm. amounts of internet but no more energy really than we had back then and so even if someone could 80s, get on that that'd be great yeah well you- energy yeah yeah solve the energy. Nice. china's working on it Oh yeah, that's spending a lot of <sighs> Nah, it's just a hoax, mate. You think so? Yeah. With all those solar farms that they're building? And and it China science. It's all, it's all just a hoax, right? Well we've we well, yeah. <laughs> we've, we've passed the tipping point though, haven't we, where now solar is cheaper than coal. It's it's so. getting there. It's it is like, in China. I think investments in solar energy are better, but honestly, maybe not actual like the energy. I would honestly I would get solar panels on my roof if they weren't hideous. Like I want those Oh stop it. Tesla. Like actual roof tile ones. Yeah, the shingle ones? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I think about too about solar energy, let's say we have solar energy. If you crack solar energy, you're pretty much done because if the sun goes out, we're not we're well, not gonna be here anyway. Not in no, the matrix that it works out. You need to crack batteries first. Right. So if you, I'm saying you, if you can create the energy from solar energy and then find a way to store it, you know, so. Yeah, but that finding a way to store it is still a pretty big problem at the moment. Pretty big one. One of our better solutions is just to move a load of water. Uh, what do you what? mean? You just move a load of water up, up a hill when you've got an excess Build of energy. Build up potential energy. And, Build up, and then let it all out when you've run out of energy. <laughs> <That's> really? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, what? That is literally... So wait. you it takes energy to push water up a hill. Yeah. Water flowing down a hill releases energy. So when you've got loads of sunshine, you'll use that excess energy to push the water up a hill. And then when the clouds come in or it's night, then you just let just it all let flow down. And then that, and power. then that powers a So water turbine. up a hill is like the biggest battery we have. It's it's currently still a viable. There are better batteries, and that p- the people are looking into it a lot. But there are still places where they're like, "Oh, we'll just build up a reservoir." That's so cool, though. I like that. It's that kind cool. of old school. It's, I love that. But energy's like that. I mean, it's essentially even like steam turbines. You're just mo- you're just twisting something. You know, it's like it's all the same. How how do you do basically the same thing? Which is with the exception of nuclear. Oh, with, even nuclear is heating water. So Gus so. is a huge fan of thorium. Do you know much about thorium at all? I know uh, very little about thorium. Is he the one with the hammer? No, thorium's <laughs> <laughs> it's like a thorium <laughs> reactor. That's Almost certainly named after the one with the <laughs> hammer, though. But, you know, it does seem to me, though, if, let's say we do crack the energy problem, and mm-hmm. energy l- is limitless and available to anybody. But it's, if we don't crack the energy problem, we're screwed. Yeah. So when we crack the energy well, problem... Are we not equally screwed, though, if we crack the energy problem? Let's say we get solar panels that are so efficient, you mm-hmm. can put them on your roof, Batteries in your garage, like the power wall from Tesla, they get those even more efficient to where you don't even need a power infrastructure anymore. You just have power where you need it because solar cells are so efficient. If we have that and everybody has limitless energy, is that a good thing? You know, is is the limitation of energy kind of keeping humanity in check with population growth and development and everything else? Like if we don't have that limitation, is that gonna then is that gonna cause its own problem? For Unlikely us? because industrialization usually causes the reduction in population growth. So you're saying that increasing in... So as countries develop... Oh, this is old school geography. Um, So (laughs) you got uh, less developed countries have very high birth rates, but also very high infant mortality rates. Sure. As they develop, the infant mortality rate drops, which means you get... But the 
birth rate stays very high, which means you get rapid expansion in the population. This was Britain um, kind of during the Industrial Revolution. Um, and then mostly mothers have lots of children as an insurance because they know that all their babies are going to die of infectious diseases or they need their children to work on farms or like basic mm -hmm. labor. So as the country becomes more industrialized, they realize they don't need to have as many kids. The birth rate drops. The infant mortality rate is pretty much already as low as it is. And the, inf and the birth rate drops below 2.2, I think right. it is, is the replacement rate. And then you get to the state of like Europe where the population growth rate declines and you start getting an aging population. But the US as well and Japan. Yeah. Japan's having a crisis with that. And Germany is as well. Really? Um, and so, yeah. So as a country becomes more industrialized, that is what causes population growth to slow. China is, I think, about to come up to its peak, um, which everyone's very excited about. Um, but, but China also has population. One child policy. Yeah. yeah the one child policy. Are they, are they, have they relaxed? They've relaxed it since it was first created, but it's still in some form. Um, but it, it's certainly more lax than it was, and it's also caused a lot of other problems, um, like female infanticide. Yes. But uh, but it is still slowing down. Which I mean, just just you know, from analyzing a population, what happens when you have a generation of men, and there's between five and ten million of them that cannot find a mate or a partner in life? They just can't find them. What happens? Uh, we don't think we know, you know, what the, what that's going to lead to. Well, I mean, that's when everyone invents digital waifus. Well, I would say that five to ten million men is that's a good sized army. Is that that's the scary thing about that to me? You know, is that is that if they run into some kind of crisis, what what happens? It also makes me wonder when UK, Europe, America were going through these crises of. I don't know if it's a crisis level yet. I don't think people may be aware of it. But if we're having this population decline because of industrialization, natural progression, then why? Then also, why are we fighting immigration so hard across the board? So that's one of the reasons that the UK has a fairly high population uh, growth rate compared to how far industrialized we are is because we have quite a lot of immigrants um, that tend to be of reproductive age so that they're just at the right age to have more kids so we, mm -hmm. have, we that is boosting our our birth rates so yeah and um, there's a lot of people so japan has an awful lot of um almost like government schemes to try and get people together dating and having kids I love it. they are trying to promote they like have like oh if you're single like we will send you on this weekend away with a bunch of other single people really and please like they literally have propaganda campaigns to try and get the people to have more kids uh, maybe what they really need to start doing is like like adding phone numbers to the ladies panties they sell in the vending machines oh that was racist they sell pants in vending machines <laughs> oh hell yeah but only on the men's only floors so, right like, next the to the girls can't get to buy them yeah wait so the men's pants or women's pants they're ladies pants on the men's floors because the men like to buy ladies underpants but they're used just oh. to, just to like have i don't know well that's those like Japan. those uh pants sniffing nights that you can go on isn't there as if we all know about them go Some ahead Gavin. Say yeah. so yeah. I, sure. think, I think there's these pants parties or under underpants parties where everyone takes them off and puts them in a bag and, and everyone then, just goes around sniffing underpants yeah you 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 sniff and then you write down who you like identify most with like the nicest smell which one you like do you know that that's a way of telling the uh genetic compatibility of partners is sniffing their sweat yeah i think that's why they do it and then you match with like if two people pick each other's stink then they're pretty much meant for each other it's like the world's worst Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> All the world's best, because you'll have possibly the most fertile offspring. Well, I mean, yeah. from, from an end result. From yeah. an immune system, <laughs> major history compatibility uh, complex. Like the Dogs. next art parts, right? What Company Christmas party. I didn't do anything. You did do something. That's Is that you? Good. That's your phone yeah, down there. Let's just do that. Let's just <laughs> off, offload it. Um, All right, so people are telling us we had to go back and tell the story about the, the study that I read. It was just some science article I read about how they're using magnets in the brain what is, is that how some... think works no i'm trying to think of the name i don't know what the term for it, but it's some kind of thing where it's non-invasive deep cranial stimulation yeah and then like they use magnets yeah they put this donut shaped thing on your head and um it focuses in so it's a bit like uh radiation therapy it's at a low enough dose on the outside but then it focuses in on a single point that's how you can like focus on a tumor inside the skin without mm -hmm. burning all the rest of the skin on the surface 
mm. that it's low enough, it's only where it all focuses in. Uh, so you can do that and stimulate a very particular part of the brain and it makes a big clicking noise as you're doing it and it can switch on or off or just completely interfere with the signal so like there are people you see videos of them talking and then they'll stimulate a part of the brain and they will just lose the ability to speak and you're like, it's completely harmless it comes off straight well, afterwards sure. How's that harmless? how do they know but, but then off. they speak to them afterwards and they're like i was trying to speak but something was blocking it like they were still trying to do it um and yeah it's just an amazing way of trying to do it there's also now where you can implant uh, an electrode into the brain um and it switches it on and i think it's parkinson's um which right. is a disease where you get muscle tremors and it's if you yeah, a picture of the donut device that I yeah think and then if you um override a certain part of the brain it gives the brain almost too much information so you no longer get these muscle tremors. And what's absolutely, um, like you have to find a YouTube video of this, is that these people have these little controllers that control the electrode in their brain. They'll switch on, no muscle shakes at all, switch off, and they can barely control anything that they're doing. They, they just can't. I think I've seen that. And I then they switch on well. and it, it, it's just incredible. Hmm. I've seen videos similar to that. You might be thinking of one where the guy smokes cannabis. And then oh, I'm, I'm definitely thinking like of a dude with a switch. Like yep. four minutes and he's just like totally fine because mm -hmm. he smoked some weed. Oh. I saw a thing with what a magnet where it's like a magnet pill that you swallow or they put in your mouth and you swallow it. What? <laughs> What's but the okay. difference between those <laughs> two? Or like <laughs> someone puts it in your throat. But then it goes down and they can like control it with magnets and it can unfold and pick up stuff and like scrunch back up and then they pull it out and it's used for like removing objects, foreign objects that you shouldn't have swallowed or like a kid swallowed or something. Like, like a Lego. <laughs> like a magnet. <laughs> but yeah, it's like they, they, it like opens up and grabs stuff and it's and they pull it out again. So they don't have to do surgery. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. Handy. I'm amazed that it's a thing. It might not be a thing. Was so, it a proof of concept sort of video? I don't know. Like it a, definitely here's was. Here's an idea. Let's put a Kickstarter campaign on. Maybe, but it was <laughs> right. <cool. laughs> that was a cool, cool idea. The Kickstarter industry is based around very fancy concept videos. Yeah. <laughs> very. The big one I've seen now is the the wristband that projects your phone screen yes. on your forearm. I've seen an amazing debunking version. Oh my of gosh! That. And I love how they'll, they'll they'll put out their prototype videos now, and it looks horrid. It's just it's just it basically looks. It's like a you projector could, structure. Yeah, yeah. It looked exactly yeah. like you'd expect it to look. Nothing like the concept video. It Has the uh, that flask shown up yet? What's the name of the thing again? The oh, cup. the vessel. Vessel. No. No. Nope. What is that? I bought Gavin a cup on, it wasn't crowdfunding exactly, but it was like a pre-order. It was that same look and feel of a crowdfunding project where they had the super fancy concept video and everything else. And it was a cup that when you pour liquid into it, it would analyze it. It would tell you the calories. It would tell you the contents of the liquid in the cup and everything. Yeah, it'd be like four this years much now. orange juice, this four many calories. Years. Four years been waiting for that cup. To and all in. they've done so far is say, is say uh, we know what we're going to make the cup out of. <laughs> it doesn't do what we said it would yet. But this made of is this. an amazing um, vessel for, for liquids. And it tells you exactly <laughs> the calories and the, the number of milliliters in it and everything on the site. I mean, seriously, I should vlog that on the internet. Do you know, I actually have a conspiracy theory about that, about <laughs> nutritional information yep. in the U.S. Nutritional information in the U.S. is literally the only thing that uses metric. Also and you cooking. don't think about it. All of our, we, we talk about ounces, we talk about pounds. Not cooking. We talk about pints for measurements and everything. But when you look at the nutritional information. 12 fluid it's, ounces. It's entirely in grams. Is it really? It's entirely. So if you Here, saw a Coke. 12 fluid ounces well, like, in brackets, like, the milliliters. I think it's right, more like, exactly like, yeah, right. so it's like a 12 calories, ounce Coke. Really grams. quickly, how many milliliters is a 12 ounce Coke? You had a 12 ounce can in your hand a billion times. Right. How many milliliters is it? Wait, a mill milliliters? It's, mm -hmm. Wait, and it's just like 100 more? Or. A hundred more? Wait, wait, hold on. I'm on. Wait, wait. So How many 12, mils 12, wait, are in this 12, can? That's a twelve ounce Coke, right? Wait, twelve ounce Coke. This How is many a normal can of Coke. Right. How many milliliters are in a twelve ounce Coke? It's conversion here. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah. I wouldn't know. I don't know. I, don't I wouldn't know. know. Does, does anybody know off the top of their head? I know off the top of my head, like but I don't know the ounces. Six. Yeah, I wouldn't know flaws. Yeah. Six milliliters. Six milliliters. <laughs> <laughs> See this yeah. one? Sally's wait, wait, no, no, no. Like, hundred milliliters. Chris, think of what a milliliter is first, and then milliliter, like small. No, Can no, no, you, no What wait. is a, a milliliter? Milli. It's, Break it's, it down it's a milli. hundred. Oh, it's wait. No, there's a hundred milliliters in a liter, right? No, wait, hundred no, milliliters in a. <laughs> that would be meter. wait. Hold sure, on. I'm dying. Wouldn't that be a centiliter? Wait, hint, hint, wait, I could. Uh, hint. 
<laughs> it was like Senta. Milla, I think you said. Senta. Go ahead. Uh, what is Senta? A hundred. Senta's a hundred. Great. So what's Miller? A thousand. There you go, buddy. There we go. Yay! Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. So Do I, you have a concept of how big a liter of water is? Liters like that big. Uh, a liter is like that. What would a th I mean, it's not, but what would a thousandth <laughs> of that look like? <laughs> a thousandth of this would be that much like a, so just like a little inch. What is this? <laughs> what did I say? I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> you said it was a hundred more. <laughs> but I, I think people okay. learn like what I, is a, a, a decent amount of sugar, for instance, in a Coke, because that's, that's how you'd look at that. If you're looking at the nutritional information, you're probably looking for the sugar content. Mm -hmm. And I believe a Coke, a 12 ounce Coke, I think is about 42 grams of sugar. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. if they told you that a 12 ounce Coke is four ounces of sugar, you'd be like, oh, this thing's like mostly sugar, or, you know, it's a third of its sugar, or it's however much it is. Yeah. Yeah, then you would be able to make a more intelligent choice. But they well, don't now often it's uh, in terms of health campaigns, it's shown in terms of teaspoons of sugar. Mm -hmm. That's how they're trying. But on the side of products, mm -hmm. yeah. I but mean, it's a scientific measurement, though. So it's and when you're looking at stuff in milligrams, you don't really want to be talking about milli ounces, like right. No, I, I get it's, it. It's it's stupid. I would say the opposite version of that for England is that all petrol is bought. By the liter, but the uh, fuel efficiency is done by miles per gallon. gallon. Is so right? nobody knows how you know. Nobody knows how to correlate. So what, those three point five liters a gallon? Well, there's also I a difference between the U.S. gallon and the U.K. Yeah, gallon, there is. Yeah. As is the Two pint. Two gallons. What? An English pint is mm. bigger. Sounds really? like fluid and ounces billion, and dry the US ounces. U.S. billion is now taken over as the standard, which we would say is a thousand million. A billion for us is a million million. Yeah, I I was never taught that that though. What that it, it's that it different. was a, a million, What's it, million. What is a thousand million then? A thousand million. Is it really? Because yeah. it can be said in those terms, and so it's fine. It is a good point. Like, why would you not say a thousand million? Because it's one magnitude lower. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I guess, like, why does it become at a thousand? That's when. So your trillion is our billion. Like, you can have a hundred thousands. Mm -hmm. Why not be able to have a thousand millions? When did that die off, though? Die. I, I at never. School, heard I was that. told that a, hun uh, a thousand million is a billion. Were you? Yeah. I was thought the opposite. Interesting. All right. Well, Gus isn't here, so we ran long. Does anybody have any, any closing thoughts for the Rushi podcast for today? Um, one last question. Uh, well, actually, this is we talked about this earlier. Um, Mitchell Conway on, on Twitter uh, said to remember to ask about food going off in your mouth. Oh, why doesn't food spoil in your mouth? And while we're at it, do you have the picture of Gavin that somebody created? I love this thing. It tastes like a menu. <laughs> 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 What's in the background? <laughs> Something about that is so relaxed. Why am I Stars transparent? on your face. Because you're a ghost. Because you have transcended. <laughs> you're now drinking memories. Oh, yeah. My verdict on the grape juice was it's in between decent grape juice and awful grape juice. They seem to have added grape flavoring. Um, like why doesn't a... food spoil in your mouth? Because spoiling takes time and... You, it's not in your mouth for long enough to spoil. Like well, when you're talking about spoiling, are we talking about microbial activity? Right. If you have like, like a little piece of stuck. meat between your teeth, yeah, and you don't discover it till yeah. embarrassingly twelve hours later, yeah. But if you left a piece of meat on the counter for twelve hours and you ate it, it feels like that would be more spoiled than something that spent twelve hours in your mouth. Well, firstly, the stuff in your mouth has got other enzymes acting on it, so we mm -hmm. have. Um, enzymes that break down sugars in your mouth but also the bacteria in your mouth are different to the bacteria just out in the air mm. and so what colonizes the meat will be different oh, so then you'll sense. get uh so plaque is a community of different bacteria that live in your mouth those will start feeding on it so you say it's, it's just a different bacterial composition but it will start being broken down in your mouth. But a bacterial composition that already exists within your mouth. Yes. That you deal with all the time. It's yeah. safe. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. That totally well, it's not sense. safe. It causes gingivitis. Um, well, not and plaque, tooth but decay like, and it, the food is It's safer. not going to kill you. Yeah. You're not going to have botulism suddenly introduced yeah. in yeah. your mouth. No. Unless, if you do, unless, you already have unless a problem. the meat already had <laughs> right. that. All right. Well, we want to thank our guest, Miss Sally LePage, for joining mm -hmm. us again. We want to thank our sponsors, Harry's, Jack Threads, and Squarespace for sponsoring the Received Podcast Night. Thank all of you for watching. We'll see you next week. Love you. Bye, everybody.